<clears throat> welcome, welcome everybody to Classic Cast. We are here for Classic Cast 19. It is uh, the premiere Wild Classic podcast. And we are here with our friend Nixium, who Nixium, it's been it's been a long time since you've been with us. It's been a very long time. I have been guys, I've been complaining <laughs> at, the, at these guys for months. Every single time they pop up in my Twitch stream or anywhere, I'm like, S fan, tips out, stay safe. When is Nixium coming bla back to Classy Cast? And they'd be like, oh, just hold on, Nixium. Just, next week, next week. But <laughs> fine, at long last, finally. I'm finally here. And it is it is good to be back, my friends. It's good to be back with all you guys in a call. How's everybody doing? Very, very excited. Yeah, very yeah, excited. Good to have you, you back. Man. Yeah. I'm really happy to have you back, dude. Mm -hmm. I've got to yeah. say, like, in the last... I don't, like I, everyone has known that you've always been a classic supporter, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, everyone, everyone knows Nixie and loves classic WoW. But in yeah. the last like six months, I feel like you've like really hammered it home with a lot of the content you've been making. Oh, dude! Yeah. Like I've been, I've been going all out, man. Like I mean, I I don't remember which one of you guys was it. Um, <clears throat> I want to say it was you. Stay safe. Uh, you, me, and you were talking one day, maybe on your stream or somewhere, and you were talking about like, like we we got to keep the energy going. Like we had like this big talk about like energy and keeping people hyped and whatnot and reminding people like, you know, hey, yeah. you know, we, like be hyped, guys. Like this mm -hmm. is something to be hyped over. And I am hyped. And, you know, I am do I am high energy. And so it's been a uh, it's been a lot of fun, like sharing videos and stories from my classic experiences, like the wetlands run video, my uh, the SFK video I made and just a lot of stuff. So. That's been a lot of fun. Also, watching Asmongold reacting to all of it on his stream. <laughs> absolutely glorious. So that's that's free publicity for me and free content for him. So we have a nice uh, mutual relationship there. Mm -hmm. So oh, shout yeah. out to him. For sure. For sure. What it is to be back. So Thank you, guys. Since it has been so long since we've had you on, mm -hmm. uh, would you mind going ahead and kind of telling us what, what you're so excited about for Classic? Right? Like, you, you're, you know, like we said earlier, you're a longtime Classic fan. You made a bunch of videos. Stay Safe just mentioned that. Uh, more recently, do you want to just go into it a little bit? Like, what does classic WoW mean to you? What does classic WoW mean to me? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, first of all, like, just like with so many people in the chat, and you know, you guys sitting here with me, I mean, uh, classic WoW was a uh, a very like life defining, childhood defining game for me. Um, I mean, I still remember the first time I, I played the game at my friend's house, and I. I made that undead warlock and I stepped out of that crypt and tears fall glades. And I just looked around and never forget I, this. This story might not mean anything to uh, some people in the chat, you know, but it, it means a lot to me because I remember I stepped out of that crypt and I pressed M on my keyboard. Well, my friend's keyboard, I should say. And then I right clicked and then I right clicked again. And I looked at that map of Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms, this entire world that was open up to be explored. And I had never really played an MMO uh, before that point. I didn't even really know what an MMO was. So it was like, uh, just thinking about that is very nostalgic for me. But a nostalgia aside, yeah, there's a nostalgia element to it. Uh, you know, it was uh, my childhood defining game, but it was also a good game. It was a great game, and it's what catapulted World of Warcraft to the success that it reached. And, um, you know, we've had the opportunity to go back and play it a little bit with, like, the demo and, you know, some other ways. But, <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> some other ways. But the point is, is that, like, it, it's just, it was a game that I, I met so many people playing, uh, so many friends, so many people, even like the friends that I have in real life today, we used to play it together all that time ago. And uh, I, I just, I don't know. It, it means a lot to me on many levels. It was a great game. It was part of my childhood. It was a way that me and my friends bonded. It was a way that I met many new people. Uh, it's what introduced me into the Blizzard universe of games. Uh, I, I had never played Warcraft 3 before or Starcraft or anything. but Really? Wow. Nope, really? never played it. So I mean, I st <laughs> I'm actually making a video about this, but uh, or no, 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 I made a video about this. I already did it. It was uh, my Warcraft lore, give it a chance video, where I talk about how the first time I played WoW, I had no idea what was going on. I'm just walking around Tears Fall Glades. There's undead around, and there's burning legion demons. Man, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I had never played Warcraft three, but it was still cool. 
But uh, WoW was like my introduction to the Blizzard universe of games, and Blizzard became it's my favorite game company of all time. And you know, uh, you know, um, do you have phone jokes aside? They are still <laughs> my favorite company. You know. <laughs> So they are still my favorite and I have high hopes. I have high hopes, but, but, uh, yeah, so it just, it just means a lot to me, like from yeah. a gameplay perspective, a social perspective and a lot of stuff. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, but really, really the big thing. And I'm sure we'll talk about this, uh, in the episode as time goes on. Uh, w one of the things that I tend to, uh, moan about a lot on my YouTube channel and on my Twitch channel and whatnot, I, I apologize to you guys. I, I moan a lot about this, but it's important to me. It's just that the the, the social element mm -hmm. of classic WoW, the community element, and that's something that I really miss above everything else. And that's something that I really, really, really For sure. uh, want to like experience again, and even see in the modern like game mm -hmm. if Blizzard can re incentivize it a bit. But those are my thoughts. That's it. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that you say that because. Uh... I think I think Blizzard sees it that way too. Uh, how how mm -hmm. valuable the the social aspect of Vanilla WoW was, um, because I think it was in the panel. I think in the panel they mentioned a couple of times that one of their like core principles of what they wanted to restore with WoW Classic was that social aspect of the game, the social elements. They wanted to make sure they didn't ruin it or uh, anything like that. So at least that's that's good to hear from them. Um, mm. So, like, there's Definitely. a lot of different opinions on, like, other stuff that they've said, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into a little bit here soon. But, uh, okay. but yeah, what did you think about the demo? I loved the demo. Yeah. Well, I, I loved it and hated it at the same time. Okay. Uh, well, hate's a strong word. I made a video talking about this. I, I don't think starting at people – or I didn't think starting everyone at level 15 was a good idea. Um, I still stand by that, and I, I've sort of seen that some of the – not with all people, obviously, but some of the things I talked about in, uh, I made a video about it, but some of the things I presented as arguments why starting people at 15 might not be a good idea kind of came true. Mm -hmm. uh, I argued, for example, that you, like, let's say Billy, he plays a hunter in BFA. You know, he's playing a hunter. He's you know doing his thing. He's got his pet. Well, if you drop him in classic, wow, like he doesn't get to go through that experience of earning a pet or anything or, uh, you know, going to the vendor for the first time to buy some arrows because he ran out or something. Like, he's already given everything he already has in the modern game. He's just dropped in Westfall, and he's just got this really, like, spacious quest system. Mm -hmm. There's no class trainers, none of that. Uh, I was more in favor of starting everybody. If you're going to start people later on, I, I liked the idea of maybe level 9. Mm -hmm. That way they would level one time, then they get to do their class quest, they get mm -hmm. to earn that void walker, earn that pet, like, earn... Uh, you know, dual wielding as a rogue, you know, and uh, they'd be like, wow, like, this is really cool. Like, I feel like a rogue. Wow, I feel like a druid. I just earned my bear form. Like, this is awesome. But I have had like a few people, even fellow streamers who I will not name, but they have uh, said uh, that they hated the demo. They just found it a completely watered down, terrible version of modern WoW. And, uh, and I think that's because they didn't get to experience a lot of that, that, uh, that like magic of class fantasy and you know uh money yeah. management there's a lot of stuff yeah. like yeah but those are know. just my those are just my thoughts but i had a ton of fun on the demo you guys did your pvp tournaments mm -hmm. missed yeah. our tips out and stay safe like <laughs> hell yeah guys i i was not able to go to yours stay safe i do apologize i was i was busy about it. I, yeah. I i wanted to go i even talked to you i was gonna make a video about it i am so sorry but I did go to Tips Outs. I was jumping around. You didn't even realize I was there. I was hopping in front of you and dancing. On... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Were you, you one know, of the druids? Like, no, I was like this. I was like the little orc shaman. I, I kept jumping in front of you. And you'd be like, oh, get this guy out of the way. Like, get... <laughs> But you never zoomed in far enough to see my name was Nixium. So I just gave up after a while. But, I mean, it, it was cool, like, seeing the tournaments and people coming together. Uh, you know, you guys, you know, are obviously responsible for that. So that was awesome. You know, doing not really whaling caverns or dead mines, but the pre whaling caverns and pre dead mines instances. Dude, I, got, I gotta butt in and say, at one point on okay. S1's, it was on S Fawn's stream, I think, we okay. were helping S Fawn to get gear. And we have a group of like 10 or 15 viewers, and I'm there, and S Fawn is there. And yep. we walk into the whaling caverns, we turn the corner, and who do we see? Oh, Nixium, yeah. With your 10 or 15 viewers, with your squad. Yeah. And just even though we were kind of like trying to steal each other's mobs and like BM each other, kind of, it was so cool to round that corner 
and just see another group of people that we knew, right? Because yeah. you, you never you never have that today. You know and what? It was so, oh, go on. No, I was just gonna say that probably was one of the coolest like single moments, like single things that happened that were just like you just spur of the moment, not planned. That was probably one of the cooler things that happened because it was oh, literally yeah. like we turned the corner and it's like a group of like Nixium and his crew and were like. What the hell? <laughs> it was so funny. Now yeah. the best part, guys, for those of you in the chat that are listening, some of you guys might remember this, you know, from S Fan Stream. The best part was Tips Out. It was me and Tips Out hanging out, and then Tips Out, you went on your merry way, you know. Then I stayed online, and then I stayed behind, and you guys were trying to level S Fan or get him gear yeah. or like you know whatever. And so what I did is I just kept following them around. I kept tagging all your mobs before you could like <laughs> before you could get them. And you're getting so mad. You're like, dude, damn it. Like, this Nixium guy keeps stealing all my stuff. And I was like, I was just laughing at my keyboard. But then I walked away. I was like, all right, I'll leave him alone now. But it was, it was, fun. It was, it was so great. funny. Yeah, we were, we were mob tagging. So to explain, basically what we were doing yeah. was uh, we were mob tagging to yep. basically power level my guy. Because I, I hadn't played or you know, I was trying to get caught up. So what we were doing is we had a raid of people together. I'm doing the old, uh, the, the old Athene trick where I would go t tag it and then everybody else would kill it and I'd get full XP. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, we were, we were playing around with some stuff like that on uh, on the demo. But, yeah, I think for me the demo was um, – and, and, and this is something we've talked about already, but uh, it, it was kind of like a progress update type of deal. And there were some yeah. things good about it, like the, the social experiences, like we're still there, but there was a lot of stuff on the back end that was just like messed up, like spell crits were doing double damage and – yeah, and paladins were just super OP. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's crazy. Like, you look at it, and I think I, I do agree with what you said, Nixon. We watched your video on stream, um, before, I think it was one? before the demo, the one where you said to start at level 9. Yeah. I, think, I definitely think that uh, from, like, an RPG standpoint, that would have been probably the best way to go about it. Unfortunately, we started looking at some of the level 10 quests, and some of the quests have you go into like certain capital cities. Some of the quests have you kind of mm -hmm. go all over the place. And if I were to Moon take Blade. a guess, yeah, yeah. Moonlight, exact. So it's like, you know, I would take a guess that it was probably because they didn't finish all the zones. Yeah. But it's one I like, like you guys just said right now, that experience of coming across somebody in the world just randomly. I feel like those were the biggest highlights and biggest takeaways from the demo because those are the experiences, like you said, I spanned. You don't see them in the modern game. Mm -hmm. And I think people really like the demo if they experience something positive they don't experience in the modern game. And the people that didn't like the demo most likely didn't have one of those experiences in the demo itself. So, like, for example, you know, in order for us to have that experience, we all have to know each other, right? Something like that. But if you yeah. tackled the demo as, like, a single player and you went in there with a single player mindset, the BFA mindset, a modern WoW mindset... I could totally see how you wouldn't enjoy it. Because like you said, it's just a slowed down version of the game today, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, less, I only... less linear questing, all that stuff. Yeah. Go yeah on. No. I mean, I was going to say, I can only speak for myself, but man, if they if they had left that demo up exactly how it was, you know, Barons, Westfall, 15 to 19, uh, obviously it wasn't perfect. It wasn't a one-to-one -one recreation, not yet of what Classic WoW will be or what Vanilla WoW was. Hope, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll be one-to-one -one or pretty close. But anyway... If they left it up as it was, um, I would play that for the next six or seven months. I would just replay it every single day. Every, I would level every class to every profession. Um, in fact, it was it was so enjoyable for me that I've had a very hard time coming back and enjoying BFA. Like I, I just have zero interest to play BFA after playing the demo. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. classic demo depression, dude. PCDD. <laughs> so classic demo depression. Yeah. 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 I mean, we did uh we did a lot of a little little events over on my stream too. I mean, hanging out, doing kind of like what S fan was just talking about, mob tagging and stealing S fans mob tags, and you know we had a good time. And it it has been weird, uh, going from the classic WoW demo, and that model, and going back to BFA. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to it, because. At least for me personally, I don't. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, it like. The differences are so strong. It, it feels like a completely different game when you mm -hmm. go from like the demo, even though it's not, you know, it's not perfect. It's not 100% classic, but you know, it's, it's close enough. Right. You know, and then going to BFA, it's like, man, like how things have changed. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and I, I I enjoyed the demo. That's my conclusion. I enjoyed it. I had fun. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think from like a, a streamer perspective, and uh, I I don't know how. I mean, I think I think this is pretty relatable, actually, to, to most people. But how a lot of people feel about you know BFA right now compared to Classic, like you know, kind of like Stay Safe said, like it's it's like hard to enjoy BFA after playing the Classic demo because 
there was next to no content in the classic demo. I, I think that's fair to say, right? It's next to no content compared to like the full blown vanilla, but it was still so much fun and there was so much going on that whenever like you go from that to BFA, it you, you kind of get stuck in a situation where you're saying like, look, like it, it's not necessarily that the th that things in BFA are not fun at all. It's that there's not enough things to do that are fun and you end up just like, you feel like you're wasting your time and it's like, okay, now I'm just like waiting for the next patch. Well, the, the reason why the demo is so fun, even though there was very, very, very little content, as you said, is because it really fosters community engagement mm -hmm. and, and just community stuff, which BFA just does not. Uh, right. It, it doesn't foster that at anywhere near the level that Classic WoW does. So yeah, I mean, Classic WoW, it, the entire game has good content, like the raids are fun, PvP is good. But in my mm -hmm. opinion, that's that's why Vanilla WoW is fun. That's why Classic WoW is fun is because of the community and that that community aspect was still there even in the demo with, mm -hmm. with the lack of content. Yeah, even yeah. even just like progressing from level 15 to 19, it's a very small window of the leveling process in vanilla. But even going from 15 to 19, you get, you know, five talent points, you know, when you log in, you get one. So five talent points, you get um, you don't get any different skills or anything like that, but you can acquire different professions. You know, mm -hmm. you get certain different pieces of gear from certain quests. You might come across a rare mob in the world, kill it, and that gear is an upgrade for you. It still felt more satisfying to level from 15 to 19 then from 110 to 120 in BFA, because the game would reward you along the way. That sense of progression right. and development, you just you don't see that in BFA. And it's funny, level 19 character, the one that I prepped for the tournament, I swear I feel more attachment to that character than I do to my main in BFA. And I'm not saying this out of bias, like for whatever reason, I just feel more attachment. I think it's the community side, but also just the sense of progression that's featured in vanilla. Yeah. Did, but before you say anything, S fan, did, mm -hmm. uh, did anybody here, you know, talking to you three guys, I'm also talking to the chat, anybody get a blue drop at any point? No, but a couple people did in the tournament. It was it was crazy. But you want to know something really one. funny? I All had right. someone, uh, as I was sort of preparing and organizing my dual tournament, someone got from a rare mob, um, the rare vulture in, in Westfall, yep. he got a, a level 21 blue rare dagger, and he traded That's it what I thought. because he I couldn't it. use it. Yeah, and I on do. stream, I just I just deleted it. It was yeah. good for nothing, dude. <laughs> dude it that's felt what so I bad. did. Really? There you yeah. go. That's great. That's dude. what I was about to say. We we did like this raid against that like rare vulture in Westfall that was a skull to everybody. And I was yep. like, guys, this is it. This is the raid boss of Westfall. Let's, let's get him, man. And we did it. And he dropped that blue dagger. And I was like, oh my god, a blue. And everyone freaked out and pogged in the chat. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. Then he deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just like the, uh, I don't know. It's it's the small progressions, right? It's the small wins, that, and that's that's yeah. what Vanilla WoW has, and uh, BFA just doesn't have that. Um, I don't I don't want to turn this into like BFA pity party. Uh, I think I think we've seen that enough on all of our streams and plenty of other people's streams the last couple of weeks. <laughs> it, it seems like so many people have this like <laughs> this like BFA depression. Yeah. Like yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Like, yeah, we do. <laughs> I mean, like, my God, like, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah. about like, everybody. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Know. We've all heard it. Everybody's, everybody's heard it. Yeah. Everybody said it. It's just, yeah. it's just one of those things at this point. So, <laughs> well, I think uh, w one more point before we like move on to something else, if that's what mm -hmm. you want to do. But uh, in regards to like the, uh, the 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 demo versus like BFA and community. Uh, one thing that, you know, Stay Safe, you know, was alluding to is the fact that in Classic WoW, the community, uh, yeah, you have the game mechanics and, you know, your class skills and, you know, your raid bosses and all that crap. But you also have, like, like the community makes so much of the content. You know, like, if, if I started a, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I have this vibe from BFA. If mm -hmm. I did a tournament, like, on the, let's say, like, on my server. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was, I'm not a streamer, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm nobody. I'm just like, just a regular dude. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to do a tournament. We're going to do a prize pool. I don't think a lot of people would show up to it. They'd just be like, ah, like, whatever, you know? But I think if I did that, like, on a classic server, and no one knew who I was, like, tons of people would show up. Because people are just, that's just kind of what you do in classic WoW. Like, you know, you log in, and within, like, 10 minutes of logging in, you're in a group with somebody. Right. You know, like, doing this quest or doing that, so getting into groups talking to people that social atmosphere is just so much a part of the gameplay mm -hmm. 
that like seeing community made events, whether it's a level one raid on Hogger, a level one gnome raid on Orgrimmar, or a PvP dueling tournament, which was really cool. I love that. It was so awesome. Um, it's just like a part of the game, and uh, I don't know. That's just a, a vibe that I kind of have. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. Agree or disagree? You know, that's just what I think. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we've sort of talked about this a million times, but I, I really, really, I really agree with you, and I really strongly feel that that's why Vanilla WoW has had so much longevity and desire for it for the last 15 years ever since it, or 13 years since it went down originally. There's always been a demand for it. I think it's because it fosters, necessitates, encourages, incentivizes community more than any other game that I have personally played. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, maybe you guys have played a game. Actually, that's a good question. Have you guys played a game that incentivizes whatever, whatever community more than Vanilla WoW? Because I personally have not. Maybe uh, even uh, online. I don't know. There, there, there are some sandbox games, but nothing like mainstream enough that's like worthy of talking about. I um, I think WoW, Vanilla WoW was still the best, mm -hmm. but Dark Age of Camelot was pretty cool. I mean, there, there were times in Dark Age of Camelot where, uh, so there, there was basically a, a, uh, it was faction. I, I don't know what to call it. I guess faction locked, uh, instance that you would go into but the instances weren't like group instances you would just it was like another zone that anybody could go into and it was just an open dungeon right so there's this big like raid area that whoever owned the most keeps out in the frontier so it was based on pvp so whoever was the most dominant pvp faction of the three would actually gain access to darkness falls that's what it was called and uh if you were already in darkness falls whenever it it changed hands then you could stay in there but if you died you got zoned out and what would happen is somebody would take over Darkness Falls and there would be a massive raid, like hundreds of people running through Darkness Falls, going down into the depths and then coming back out into where the other entrance is, where the other faction is, and just wiping out everybody. Or, on the other hand, there would be people who would be there and they would just stealth and they would stealth their way to the entrance of another faction's area whenever they took over. So then a lobby who's going in there to kill like the high level or the, the lower level stuff in the higher areas... They would just go one shot them, <laughs> just like gank them, but like yeah. stuff like that. Like that was one thing that Dark Age of Camelot had that was really cool was a uh, large scale uh, player interaction, I guess. In terms, like it was basically like a world boss type event, you know. And, and except you weren't like in a forty man raid or a five man group or something like that. It was just whoever was there was there. But yeah, I would say uh, SWG. Star mm. Wars Galaxies definitely had that vibe. I even saw some people saying it in your chat, like SWG, SWG. SWG, for you know, no for those that didn't play it, I mean it it was a very community driven game. I mean, you could even make like player made cities in the game, have your local like player mm. politician, you know, and everything. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Lord of the Rings online lately, and although it I wouldn't say it has as much social interaction as classic does, it's sort of like if classic wow is like you know like big high energy like community and bfa is like you know more like of a single player experience lotro is kind of in the middle because i don't interact with people that much but when i do it's like like i was talking to a minstrel for example you know a person plays music mm -hmm. and they were like hail weary nixium like let me teach you the drum skill and then he used his player power to teach me how to play the drums in the game. And I was like, whoa. And then we went to Bree together, where the Prancing Pony is. Shout out to the Lord of the Rings nerds in the chat. Oh, and yeah. I was like, whoa. And I bought a drum, and I started playing it. And I was like, oh, wow, I can play the drums now. And we started like playing music together. So that was really cool. But um, there's not like tons of group quests or anything. like you know. So Lord of, yeah. Lord of the Rings has recently re reopened like old school sort of legacy servers, right? Something to Yeah, that the, the legendary servers. That's why I'm playing it. You know? Yeah, so that seems to be a trend. Like... Um, I think there's an EverQuest one, Lord of the Rings now, Classic WoW, Warcraft 3. They recently did StarCraft. Mm -hmm. Probably Diablo 2 is on the horizon. There is a big trend with, well, I mean, obviously Old School RuneScape. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is a very popular thing to re-release these old games right now. I think there's a really big demand for them. I think that sort of highlights how little new games are catering to this community of old school style gamers. Yeah. Why do you think that is? <clears throat> what, what do you think it is? Is it like, oh, they're too casual? Like, what do you, what do you think it is? What's the formula? I, I think I yes. think what's happened is modern game development caters to people that can only play two or three hours a day after work that have kids and a family, but they have more disposable income, which is why you see 
mm-hmm. microtransaction sort of mobile game design leaking into PC games. And I think that probably new game design is not going to cater to us sort of old school, hardcore gamers anymore. And I think that these companies are sort of throwing us a bone to keep us interested with these old rehashes of old games we've already played. That's what I think is happening. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like it just costs a lot less to re-release a game than to develop a new game from scratch. And because technically we spend less money on games, and by we, I mean, you know, the age is 21 to 35 demographic, more hardcore gamers, um, people that traditionally are more prudent in their microtransactions. I would take a guess that the majority of people in chat right now and you three gentlemen probably spend less on microtransactions than the average player. Because we don't make game developers as much money, they don't spend as much money catering to us. And and that's in the form of these remasters. But it's very popular. Um, like you said, all those games you mentioned, Stay Safe, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, like yeah. even console games are doing it too. Like it's just this giant regression uh, back to, to the old days. Yeah, yeah I think uh, this is what I'm hoping. I, I'm hoping that's how it starts. And, and there's there's two points to it, right? Like there's the nostalgia factor, but then there's also the, the about the design of the game. And, uh, you know, different games are different. Maybe, maybe Spyro. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I remember playing Spyro at, at Target whenever they used to have the... Uh, uh, they dude, used to have the, yeah, you, you know, and yeah, they used yeah, to have those dude, setups. Spyro. So I would play Spyro there all the time, but I, I didn't like play through it or anything whenever I was younger. But I just, I, I'll always remember that. Um, maybe some of that's like the nostalgia factor. But then on the other hand, there's uh, there's the design of the games, and that's I think one of the things with WoW, for example, or uh, maybe with this classic Lord of the Rings server with old school RuneScape. People want to go back and play these games not just because they're, uh, the, you know, they they have some nostalgia. <laughs> you know, they, they get hit with nostalgia whenever they think about it or play it. It's also because the games were actually good, right? They actually yeah. liked playing the games. They were designed well. And uh, you can't really go back and play them. It's not like it's not like I can go grab Super Mario 64 and, and plug it into an N64. Mm-hmm. It's not like that, right? I can't take a, a disc for Vanilla WoW and shove it in my computer and make it work. Uh, yeah. That's why the whole private server thing happened, and now finally we're getting legacy servers. So I, I think there's uh, there's different facets to it, and... I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think all you guys are right. I want to say, like, I don't know if I'm being too, too pessimistic or critical, but I also think that game de- modern game development has sort of put the cart before the horse, so to speak. I mean, in the past, I think they used to think, okay, if we design a really good game, people will like it and they will buy it. And now I think going, and that was their, that was their philosophy going into games. Mm-hmm. And now with game development, I think they, my impression is that their thought process is, okay, what sort of game can we make um, to make us the most money? So I think mm. it's sort of shifted. It's it's sort of done a 180. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do yeah. you guys think, out of pure curiosity, before I make another point, mm. do you guys think that, like, uh, think back to when you first played Classic WoW, however old you were, do you think that uh, take somebody of that age today, you know, a 14-year-old, you know, Michael in, in you know high school or whatever, do you think that uh, Classic WoW or some of these old-school games would be just as much fun for Michael today in 2018 as it was for you all the way back in 2004, 2005. Absolutely, I, I do think it. I do think it would be, and I think there's a huge misconception when it comes to young audiences. Um, older players typically look at long, young audiences and say, "Well, this new generation, these guys are so casual. You know, mm. they, they, you know, classic WoW would just not appeal to them. It's too hardcore." If you actually look at the younger audiences, if you look at games like Dota 2, League of Legends, Fortnite, <laughs> the, these are not casual games. And I think uh, people are going to laugh, especially about League of Legends uh, and stuff like that. Fortnite, man. Come on, dude. Like, <laughs> well, well, here's the dude. Go, go play a game of Fortnite right now. You know, like, all right, I, I will. Like, right. <laughs> what I mean what? by casual, what I mean by casual yeah, is yeah. these games have a tremendously high skill cap and they have competitive yeah. MMR ratings attached to them. The game itself might seem simple on the surface, but these games do have a tremendous amount of complexity. And ga- and games like World of Warcraft Classic, I think they actually capture and cultivate that that mm-hmm. hardcoreness and are more appealing than games like BFA because BFA is a game with, you know, and modern WoW in general, it's very very low skill cap, very very low mm-hmm. skill ceiling. Whereas vanilla, because of all the diverse classes, all the diverse skills, all the diverse items, professions, how everything works together, it does have a much higher skill cap. And personally, from the players that I played with on these unofficial servers, the young players do seem to like it a lot. Uh, well, uh, I was just going to add. Man. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. add to that. I, I think that uh, I think that you're kind of you're, you're going to kind of see something similar that you saw back in 2004, whenever WoW came out, and that was that there were other MMOs that existed there were but 
nothing was made in the same kind of scope that Vanilla WoW offered, right? Just from start to finish, the PvP, the PvE, uh, the raid environment, everything, right? Player interaction, everything. And you're in that same kind of... You're, you're in that same kind of drought now. So I, I don't think it would be crazy to see... I don't think it would be crazy to see somebody like who who hasn't experienced that kind of gameplay and it's like you know what I might want to give this a try. They come in, they play, like you know what this is really really good because mm. it, a lot of people considered MMOs to be a dying genre for a few years now. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think it's more so that just a lot of the MMOs haven't been very good because they keep trying to uh, they they try and like push towards what you're seeing with like I, I, and I would always call it like Call of Dutyifying games. Whenever they just like adding in like a queue system, matchmaking, all this stuff, like that's boring. Like that, that's not for an MMO. That's not RPG stuff. That's that's Call of Duty, right? And that's fine. Like that's for that kind of game. It's not for this kind of game. But they keep trying to move towards right. that, and you're moving away from what this game is supposed to be. And a lot of games have done this. So if Vanilla Wild comes in or Wild Classic comes in and just like plops itself right back where it started, then it's like, oh wait. This game's back. This type of game is back. And I think there's going to be a lot of younger players who uh, are going to be interested in that kind of game too. So, man, yeah. you've been like you've been like spying on like some of me and my friends' conversations. That's what we always say. Like oh, everything is like, so Call of Call of Duty fied like, really? these days. Like matchmaking. Yeah. Like we always say the exact same really? thing. Like yeah. I was like, wow. But no, the reason why I brought this up is because I, I watched a video recently about it was like some some young dude and he was talking about classic WoW and it, the video was called like uh it's like classic wow sucks and you're gonna hate it or something like that <laughs> and essentially what he says like his argument um was he was saying like you know nowadays like he was like for me like i played classic back in the day and it sucked like i had two level 60s so i was like game sucked and you got two 60s but he's saying like i had these two 60s and i raided all the time but the game was so bad and i hated every second of it and nowadays now that i'm older and i'm married and i've got a job and everything blah 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 I don't have time to play classic wow and to invest in like a hardcore game like this and uh therefore the game is just gonna suck for someone like me and we watched this on twitch and my first response was so what about like who cares if the game maybe it doesn't apply to you specifically but what about the young people today that were your age when you first played it what about them mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so we, we had a big old talk about that i mean i mean some people in the chat you probably fall in that category like hey maybe Maybe like we don't have the free time that we used to, but you guys do, and so you get to go and you know, play in Azeroth like nine hours a day and have a good old time on the weekends, eating your sugary cereal and watching cartoons and playing classic WoW. Like you're gonna live the dream, just like we did, yeah. you know? Like, and I mean, like that's that's another thing. That's why I'm like a big like, yeah, bring classic, you know, no changes. I want you guys to experience what we did and why we're like geeking out over this stuff, you know, all these years later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I got to think about the children, you know what I mean? got to think about them kids. Yeah, I, I think you're <laughs> right. Um, I, I think probably the vast majority of people playing Classic WoW are going to be people that have never played it before on a private server or back in the day or otherwise. I think it'll be completely new people. Like over 50%, I think it'll just be completely new people. Yeah. And I think, mm. I think another big population of people is going to be the people who didn't get to finish, right? Like people who, like for me even, right? So for me, before before I started the private server stuff where I, I did all the content, um, in, in retail vanilla wow i only got into aq a little bit right i only got part way through aq I, I didn't i was like a social raider i was just like randomly raiding here and there and i, and I joined a few different guilds mm -hmm. but uh it wasn't like that same experience that i had later on whenever i was older and i and i wasn't in middle school and i i could manage my own schedule right uh, even mm -hmm. if my parents disagree i could manage my own schedule a little bit so i spent my time and resources on playing vanilla wow <laughs> private server sure. stuff but the same thing <laughs> the same thing's gonna happen again right classic's gonna come out and uh, i'm gonna get to go through and this time officially get to go through and finish everything that i started and, and i think a lot of people feel that way they want to go and they want to finish the job um i, I think that's going to be a huge population of people too absolutely yeah. And I do want to call back to something you said a little bit earlier, S fan, about games being better back then than today. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times, like, you know, you hear every generation say, oh, back in my day, the music was just better. Or back mm -hmm. in my day, the cars were just better. And everyone has this sense of nostalgia towards their generation. I think specifically this generation, though, when we talk about games, I do think games back then were better. And not because of any like intangible reason, oh, they were just better. 
because they had to be better in order to make sales. Back then, you didn't have social media marketing. You didn't have SEO optimization. You didn't have a screen on freaking refrigerators when people go like to the refrigerator. Nowadays, because of how ubiquitous marketing is and how effective marketing strategies are, you can make your game crap, but invest everything into the marketing scheme and sell millions of copies and pre-orders or something along those lines. I remember when the God of War, uh, the God of War trailer, not the, I think it was God of War trailer came out like a year or something ago. And people were saying, oh my God, this looks amazing. This game looks fantastic. And fortunately it did turn out to be a very good game. But if you look at the trailer, it's just a freaking cinematic, you know, like how, how the heck do you know? The it has nothing to do with the game. game. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the game. But the way these, these cinematics are made now, the way that, like all the marketing is pushed on you, people are, are leaving these campaigns thinking to themselves, oh my God, I need to buy this game right away. Again, back in the day, you didn't have this level of, of mass marketing. A game had to be good. You had to get like a really good rating in like a gaming magazine if you even followed that stuff. And that's really all you had. So the incentive to make better games was definitely there. Yeah. You, you, you had also, to make it to make it. You couldn't fake it to make it. Exactly. Well, I, I would you say. Also, when you, when you right bought now. a game on the shelf, you actually got the full game. <laughs> you know, like when I bought Age of Empires 2 Dude. back in the day, boom, Age of Empires 2. No, like, uh, yeah, there was DLC later on, but there was nothing on the box saying, well, you could, instead of paying 60 bucks, you can pay 100 right now and you get the DLC later. Yeah. Like, well, what DLC sucks? The, the season you know? pass or whatever. Yeah. yeah, when I bought Halo, man, like OG old school camp combat evolved Halo, the combat evolved Halo. I got Halo, the whole game. Yeah. Nothing else. Like, there was yeah. something special about Dude, that. I don't remember what game it was. I remember like the first time it, it was it was early in like the the DLC era, where there was a game that came out, and it was like the first time that. It was on release day. They had DLC available, and just everybody was like, "What the crap what? is this? Like, yeah. why do you why did you not just put this in the game? You're making us pay extra to play like the game." That's like how everybody saw it. It was like an extra yeah. map pack or something. I can't remember what game it was. I wish I could remember, but that that was just one of the things that it, it totally uh that that just triggered that in my head. But uh, yeah, back to what Tips was saying, I, I would actually say that there was a lot of things like uh, as far as marketing and stuff goes. I, I think looking at Blizzard specifically. Uh, I think Blizzard cinematics have always done a really good job at selling the games too. Like even from the beginning of like Vanilla WoW, or you know, you go back and you like, I, like I said before, I I didn't play Warcraft three before I played WoW. I, I came in from other MMOs, but um, watching the Warcraft three cinematics, it's kind of crazy to think that most of these were made in like two thousand or two thousand one. Mm. Oh and, yeah, like, yeah. they held like, up so well, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it, it blows my mind, and it's like uh, I, I think stuff like that's always been there in terms of trying to like uh, sell a game with a cool cinematic or uh, or anything like that. I just think the that means to broadcast it hasn't been there. That's the issue. The means to broadcast it, it proliferating all sorts of like overall social media. And the medium and has changed like basically. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't have like a bunch of YouTubers like making videos about new games coming out as well. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. a thing back then. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Mountain Blade. Banner Lord too. Yeah. <laughs> so, can't wait. Do they yeah. have a release date yet? No. Figures. No, they don't. I've been working on it like eight years. I need to hurry up. Dude, that's it's the only game worse than Camelot Unchained as far as like announcing <laughs> it. <laughs> like there's nothing oh my happens. Gosh. Yep. Yeah. Banner Lord man. But, yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll play it before we die. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we'll, if we're we'll lucky. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, it's for the it's for the next generation. It's not for us. Right, right. <laughs> But um, all right. Anyway, kind of going back to to the BlizzCon stuff. Um, there was some good news and bad news. I mean, just uh, kind of want to get your thoughts on this. Um, okay. there was some things that uh, yeah, like there was good news and bad news, right? Depending on who you are, I, I think it's it's interesting because uh, there seems to be a lot of people that are like, oh yeah, everything they said at BlizzCon was cool, and there's some people who are like, everything they said at BlizzCon was bad. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle where I'm like, well, these things were good. Like, as far as, like, most of the stuff that they said that's set in stone, I was like, okay, that's, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But then a lot of the stuff where uh, they said it's tentative, I'm kind of like, come on, guys. Like, I was like, the heart starts beating. Like, make the right decision. Like, <laughs> I'm kind of worried. Um, you know, they, they talked about, like, the sharding thing, I, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a dead conversation. But um, I think that we've heard enough by now that they're looking at alternatives. But um, how, how do you feel about that? You made a video on this recently about about how I'm showing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You Nixium, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, I made a video talking about it. So I mean, I won't like 
you know, I won't bore you guys for 20 minutes on my thoughts. Mm -hmm. But uh, my thought was um, Ian Hazakostas walked up on stage and he made a metaphor and he, or, you know, he told this thing where he said, what we're going to do is we're going to recreate classic wow exactly as it was. You know, we're going to, that's like our goal. Mm -hmm. And he said, if a dude went to bed in like 2004, 2005 and he woke up, you know, in 2018, he would log into WoW and it would be exactly as it was. And he was like, that's what we're aiming for. Right. But, and then he threw a but. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there it comes. But. It's like, here it comes. He's like, well, you know, but we're thinking about putting like loot trading in. I was like, and then he's like, and we're thinking about like putting sharding in the starting zones to like reduce like server lag and stuff when the servers first launched. And I'm like, and I, I know, you know, that a lot of people crucified me when I made that video. And I was like, no hashtag no changes i'm standing by it like no i don't want that loot trading no i don't i don't want that sharding in the starting zones because my thing um i mean maybe i'll make a follow-up video eventually when i care to i, mean, I just don't care but like but I, I'll, I'll say this in a video but i'll say it here i mean like if the argument is like oh well we want the servers to be stable like at launch okay mm -hmm. that's fine you know so you're gonna put sharding in well what about when you have the uh, Encourage, like the opening of Encourage event, and everybody's in one zone, not multiple starting zones, but in one zone? I agree. Yeah. What yeah. about when people are fighting in Terran Mill and South Shore? Like, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that stuff crashed servers back in the day. What about when guilds are fighting over Blackrock Mountain or over world bosses? What about when everybody's in the Plague Lands when Nax comes out? Are we going to have sharding there too to have server stability? Or are we going to keep it classic? Mm -hmm. You know? So my thing is just keep it classic. Um, like I'm, I'm just a big no changes guy. I mean, I'm not like so no changes that I'm going to like rant and rave about colorblind mode. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> um, like I, I see that's kind of become like a meme, at least in my comment section. Like, but what about colorblind mode, Nixium? Yeah. Like, all right, you, know, you, you can have the colorblind mode. That's fine. But, yeah. <laughs> but everything else, like no, no changes. I mean, not, none of that stuff. So that's just me. That's my opinion. I don't want to see uh, we, me and S-Fan were talking about this before we went live. Uh, I think you described it kind of like a snowball effect mm -hmm. where it's like you have a uh, sharding in the beginning, for right. example, and then it's like you then you put it here and here and here for the exact same argument. And ultimately, you end up with a uh, a sharded community. And I don't want a sharded community. I want a strong, tight community, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I acknowledge there are some like downsides to that, you know, p possible server crashes, all that stuff. But hey, man, like that, that was I'm sorry to any IT people like in the chat, but I mean, back in the day when the Terran Mill and South Shore battles crashed the server, that was like, yeah. But I know you guys <laughs> we, were doing it. Out your hair behind the scenes. <laughs> oh my God. I know you guys were doing it, but you uh, know what? Like, <laughs> like, we're trying to make jobs. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make that's jobs. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, that's right. that, that's, outside that, of that, that, that outside uh, of that, it's, right. like, it's like if you're logged in. You know, let's say the servers come back uh, come back up after a crash. You know, everyone that's around you is actually there. Like, that's everyone. You yeah. don't have to worry about, you know, like, sharding is just so bad. Like, you you never know if your friend is a different shard. Or I've, I've, I've been playing BFA trying to do, you know, war mode PvP stuff. And half my raid has been sh in a different shard. People in my raid yeah. group. Like, you yeah. can't have stuff like that. It's absolutely detrimental to, to like, the, the, mm -hmm. the fundamental aspect of vanilla WoW, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what, like, is crazy to me? It seems like in the past 14 years of WoW, the server technology has gotten worse than better. Like, when we did Project 60 the other day and we started it up, uh, Asmin logs into the server and obviously you have the crazy influx of, of people watching a stream going in. Yeah. And, like, the server just becomes non-functional. Like, you cannot do anything. Like, it doesn't crash, but it's just, it's non-functional. Mm. And, you know, you look to videos of, of certain other unofficial servers like Nost with thousands, tens of thousands of people in, like, one location when the server is going to shut down. And you're like, how, how are these guys doing it? And this ragtag team of oh. private server developers. And how can this multi-billion dollar conglomerate not, not keep the servers up? I mean, I don't know. Well, I, I, I think, well, my mind. I think, I think the guys, server I infrastructure know. is intentionally different. I think they are designed differently with different intentions. Like, like retail WoW server infrastructure is intended to, to be used with sharding, right? Whereas classic WoW is not. So I think that's probably the difference. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say that... Uh, I mean, just being in that situation, like, I'm, I'm thinking back to, like, just the AQ40 launch on private server. Like, I mean, it was crashing nonstop, and there were maybe, like, a few hundred people there. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, you, you, you like the, that NOS video, like, you see all this stuff of all these people there. But at the same time, like, 
nobody could actually do anything <laughs> like yeah. you know what i mean like on your end you're like you're seeing the video but like it's it's not something that like if if people are like actually like fighting or something's going on like people are gonna bug out and crash and it's gonna be super laggy that's what it was at but like did, the aq40 event at least but that's a part of like, it like that's that's part of the experience yeah. like i don't did know it, did it make you quit the game though no it made me want to yeah, log back exactly. in faster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, was like, I gotta get back. Oh, I gotta get back. Get back in, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another thing with the whole loot sharing, Blizzard made this whole like, they made this whole thing like, oh, you know, we're trying to reduce like strain on GMs and whatnot, mm -hmm. and you know, yada yada yada. It's like, listen, it's like I want those GMs to have jobs. Right. You know, I'm a jobs YouTuber. Right. Okay? <laughs> All right. Nick Sam is the jobs YouTuber. All right. I want those GMs to have jobs. For I want that common man. Thing. Like, no, you ain't doing that, Blizzard. You ain't doing that. You ain't yeah. pulling that with me. Yeah, no. It's, so. I mean, they say that, but it's like, just being yeah. real, like, it's it's the strain on their wallets. Like, they, they don't want to hire more GMs. Like, that's yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> like, yeah. they would, they would like, just have on. to. Yeah. Come on, guys. Like, you know. But, you know, yeah, I made a video, and I, I that original video that you're referring to, where I, like, uh, talk about uh, these changes, that video originally was, like, 25 minutes long, and I cut it down into, like, a 12-minute bit or however long it was. I probably shouldn't have done that in this section because I, I I said this thing in my video, which people took it out of context, where mm -hmm. I said that ninja looting is actually a good thing and it's good to have it in yeah. a uh, in an MMO. I and agree. I elaborated on I elaborated on it a little bit in my original recording, but I cut out so much of it. Um, but you know, like Asmongold watched my video on stream, and he he pretty much said exactly what I said in the original recording. It, it builds an element of trust mm -hmm. uh, among like the people in the community. Um, you can blacklist people in the community, like, oh, stay safe. You stole my dagger. I'm never would. inviting you to my. He would. <laughs> yeah, I would. Guy, don't invite him to your guild. Don't do it. Don't join his guild. He'll steal. I'll just, all make, your I'll stuff. just make my own. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Don't join him. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Don't do it. No, he steals my stuff. I'm never inviting him again. Hey, guild mates, tips out. Don't invite that guy. Don't invite him. I know you're leveling. He's around your level. Don't invite him. He'll steal your stuff. Hey, S fan, tell your guild. Don't invite him. You yeah. know, it, it creates a sense of community, blacklisting people, all that stuff. Because there is an opportunity for frustration, I guess, there is also an opportunity of achievement. And there's also, like, the, the exact counter opposite. Me and stay safe for both <laughs> warriors. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you know, he he needs this sword, and I need this sword. And he says, you know what, Nick Sam? You can have that sword. It's more of an upgrade for me, but you can have it. I ain't going to take it. You right. know, it's like, oh, thank, thanks, man. I mean, it wouldn't be ninja looting if he needed it, but he's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to take it, dude. Right. I, I, think, I, think, I think even more than just ninja looting, it comes down to player, like, decision-making player agency, mm -hmm. right? And taking yeah. responsibility for your actions. Yeah. There are an infinite number of ways you can make poor or, or good actions in Vanilla WoW that have very, very long-lasting ramifications on your gameplay. And in modern games, uh, BFA, for example, you don't really have many ways that you can screw yourself over long term um, compared compared to vanilla WoW, at least. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To need to, to have good guys, you need bad guys, you know, to have cops, you yeah. need criminals. And right. like, I think the best example in recent times that I can remember is Timeless Isle and Mr. Pandaria. If you guys remember the, the blood coin farming. Um, yep. Bloodcoin farming was awesome, but what was even more awesome about it was when some like team of bloodcoin farmers came out and started ganking you on your own faction, and then like all of a sudden you would get like a you would see a group of random people join together and fight back against the bloodcoin farmers, people that were on your server that you didn't really know, you didn't really talk to, but all of a sudden because you add a dynamic of allowing people to be get bad guys, these good guys come together, and again it develops that sense of community. You meet more people, you learn more about people. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you, Nick. Yeah, mm. and, and it's uh, it's an accountability thing, right? So like whenever whenever you know that your actions have consequences, uh, going back to the agency, player agency thing, like your actions are going to have consequences and you can make a, a, a calculated like, okay, if I do this, then this is going to happen. If I steal this, then people are going to know and they're going to trash talk me and whatever and, and other people are going to know that I'm, that mm. I'm ninja looting something. It's not yeah. so much that ninja looting is a good thing. It's that the fact that the opportunity, the ability to make your own decisions exists to where you could make a bad decision like that. That is a good thing. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. We live in a society speech. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? What, like, what is, like, what is Blizzard's like motto nowadays? The, it's play like, nice, play uh, fair. Play yeah, nice, play fair. I ranted the about this last night. I've ever heard. I ranted like, about this last night. Ever. Dude, yeah. I could rant about that for two hours. Play nice, play fair. Like, are you kidding me? Like, are well, you nuts? Like, it, what, what it does, right? What it does is it takes away from like it. It 
it breeds this environment of people being soft. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's, I, I understand like, and I'm, I, I'm somebody who I would consider myself to be a nice person. I would consider myself to be a fair person, but uh, contrary to some others, maybe I don't know, <laughs> but no, 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 but I, um, I, I don't see it as something where like, I, I, if I grew up in life where nobody did anything wrong to me, whenever it finally happened, I would be just shattered and destroyed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like, no, I, I, I grew up and I had people and we've all had this. Everybody's had a situation where they were in elementary school or middle school or, you know, somewhere where somebody made fun of them. Somebody did something. And it's like, no, that didn't feel very good. But that allowed me to grow as a person. And to the point now where I, I, the average comment like, hey, uh, you're, you're fat. Uh, like, I mean, I, like, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like. But if, if nobody had ever like called me fat before and the first time somebody called me fat at 27 years old, I would just, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's stuff like yeah. that. that just kind of like, Say it, man, I can, live in a I can relate to that, man. I can, <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. You know? yeah. They can call like, you fat all the, all they want, but at the end of the day, I bet they can't even do a deadlift, man. <laughs> right. I right. didn't want to hear it. That's right. Okay, yeah. like, or tip cool. down. Uh, like and it's one thing to implement that policy in other games, just just not MMORPGs. Like, MMORPGs are meant to be reflections of, like, society. I mean, the better an MMORPG is, the more immersive it is. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, fine, your other games, Overwatch, you want to limit toxicity, whatever, do what you want to do. But an MMO, I mean, massively multiplayer online game that's meant to have these social dynamics, don't, don't put it in that, you know? Apply it yeah. everywhere else, just not this genre. What do you think? Stay safe. Yeah, I agree. I mean, outside of, I'm just curious, outside of ninja looting, um, which obviously you can't, you cannot do because you, you have no control over any loot at any point in this game. Um, <laughs> what, what sort of player behavior do you think has changed? Um, cause obviously in retail, wow, the fat example, you, you still could call someone fat in game. So what sort of like player behavior outside of ninja looting do you think should be there that isn't there anymore? I'm, I'm trying to think of something. Mm, it, it... <clears throat> Hmm, let's think about that for a second. Well, I think, I mean, people are going to take the path of least resistance, right? Yeah. So whenever you have a chance to queue up for a dungeon, whenever you have the chance to LFR, whatever it is, people are naturally, as a group, uh, on you know, on average, they're going to take the path of least resistance and they're going to do, uh, they're going to take the easiest route to do whatever task they want to accomplish, right? Mm. So if that means I want to do a dungeon, I want to get my daily whatever out of the way, I'm going to queue up for it. Instead of going to trade chat and hey, uh, you know, uh, warlock, LFG, whatever. Hmm. I, or go I think on your I, X fire account, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, or go on your yeah. X fire, the original yeah, battle. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Shout out to X fire. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's one of the big things with that. Mm. Yeah, I, I think like off the top of my head, I think it's not so much like individual player actions. It's just that there is no reason to interact at all in the first place. Yeah. There's, there's just no reason to do it anyway. Um, whereas before there was like, for example, someone in chat said mob tagging. Yeah. Mob, mob tagging, tagging mobs was always, it was always an event. Like you, like, like a, a big aspect of vanilla, in my opinion, is scarcity of resources, scarcity mm -hmm. of honor, scarcity of gold, scarcity of mob tags. You're always fighting over everything. You're trying to get scraps and build yourself up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when you're doing Panther mastery and Stranglethorn veil vale, and everyone else is trying to get their Panthers and you're trying to get your Panthers. Um, there's a there's a five man group there and a five man group here and you're in your five man group. I mean, every everyone's those Panthers are a resource. And you're trying to fight for them. And now mob tagging isn't even a thing in the game. So I think that's actually a really good point. And also the just mm. just the dungeon finder stuff. It's it's all true. Those goddamn mm. shadow mob Panthers, dude. They say they're by the trees, but you go to the trees and they're not freaking then, there. They're <laughs> not there, man. <laughs> yeah. Now, dude, the wor the worst quest, man, that just immediately comes to mind. Stranglethorn Vale. It's PTSD, man. This quest just messed me up back in the day. Mm -hmm. Don't remember what it's called. Don't care what it was called. It was the quest that you got where you had to kill the gorillas right outside of Booty Bay and get their like their hairs, the fine gorilla hair or whatever mm -hmm. it was. <laughs> yeah. That quest, the drop rate on it, um, you you have better luck getting the headless horseman mount like every year, every like around every Halloween. Like, oh, I hated that quest. Like, <laughs> dude, you but know it was the best. You know what quest yeah. is just like that in the same exact area, not the same exact area, but on the other side of it, is the, the, the quest. One. 
the, the one, Akira's reads. Yeah, yeah, like Akira's reads oh, or whatever. Dude, oh, like yeah. that that's like the biggest noob trap. I'm never ever going to complete that quest ever. Like <laughs> in, in at least in vanilla, I'm just going to skip it. Like I I tried to do it. The last time I tried to do it, I was like, "How long is this going to take?" It's like an hour had passed and I gotten two. <laughs> like I was constantly yeah. PVPing. Like I was just like, "I don't even know what just happened, but it's terrible, dude." Yeah. I'm not doing that quest. So bad. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned those gorillas. Like in my mind, I associate those gorillas with like really positive thoughts because in early 2005, when I was leveling my first vanilla character, my mage, I was level. I think I was level 37. I'm doing that quest. I'm killing. I'm killing. The, they're called Elder Mistvale gorillas. That's I it. Kill, yep. I kill one. Staff of Jordan drops, Ooh. and I'm a mage. Ooh. Staff of Jordan. Those gorillas are very, very happy thoughts for me. I love yeah. those gorillas. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying I look back at it with like hatred. I mean, I, I, I grouped up with many a person doing that quest back in the day. Kind of like stay safe with saying. I mean, there's only so many Elder Mistvale gorillas, and there's a lot of people trying to farm them. So what do you do? It's like, oh, well, hey, this guy's doing it too. So I guess I'm gonna group up with him. Hey, what's up? My name's Nixium. How's it going? You talk to them and you grind it for like four hours trying to get those like gorilla like butt hairs or whatever and you get to know somebody and they end up on your friends list and that's yeah. the beauty of it you know and so 14 years later 14 years later you still talk about it like and 14 years later you still talk about it you never forget exactly that's right think about how much like residual consequential content that quest has made for you beyond just experiencing it back in the day how many conversations have you had with people about this specific quest how many times have you reminisced on it talked about it I mean, that's all content produced by the game. You know, just extra content beyond the actual content itself. Yeah, misery well, it's funny. Company, I'm making right? a video about that quest, actually. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Pay tribute, man. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just going back to the Staff of Jordan thing, I mean, I will, I, will, I will never... That was my first epic in WoW ever. I will never forget that. And I log into my 120 character on BFA, and now the system is, okay, I get Azerite pieces, and they're all bad, and then I disenchant them to, after six weeks, make a new epic Azerite piece, and it's like all the gear is completely just inconsequential to me. It's just, mm. I, I, I couldn't name a single piece of gear I'm wearing, but for some reason, I will never forget the, getting that Staff of Jordan, right? It's, mm. the gear had so much more impact, and like I said, it all goes back to that scarcity of resource uh, sort of philosophy in Vanilla WoW. What, what would you say is the most popular item in Vanilla WoW? Other than carrot on a stick. Pop, like, I, popular I, in terms of like everybody like, has knows it. it. Everybody knows Thunder it or Fury. has it. Iconic Thunder Fury. Ah oh, no, 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 no. That, that's too easy. Thunder Fury and stuff. That's too easy. Like it can't be a legendary. Okay. Whirlwind axe. Be a legendary. I'd say Whirlwind Axe. Whirlwind it's axe. very close. I wouldn't say that. I, yeah, I wouldn't say, say that. I never axe. played a warrior back then, so I didn't even know about that item. Until you made your video and I was like, wow, look at that. Cool. Like I had seen it, but I didn't know what it was. Um Arcanite Reaper is up Yeti. There. <laughs> I think Arcanite Reaper is up there. Okay, Arcanite Reaper. And a lot of it has to do with the, you know, the Arcanite Reaper ho. Oh, like, that's yeah, like a lot man. to do with it. Going back yeah. to, like, community and, you know, old machinima and stuff like that. <laughs> Somebody wrote Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, Hearthstone. And Herod's Shoulder. Oh, that's a good one, too. A big one, too. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I, I, I would actually maybe agree with that. I mean, even as a cloth wear, in my mind, like, that's such an iconic piece because it's it's one of the first pieces of gear that looks cool. Everything yeah. else yeah. before that looks so terrible. And you and get you see someone with that and you're like, wow, yeah. that guy looks like a badass. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh Yeah, Arcanite Reaper. As far as like trinkets go, I thought of Hodge. I thought of Hand of Justice was like the first thing that came to mind, but I, I don't think that's something for everybody. There's another item that comes to mind that Blizzard renamed, but I'm not gonna say it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yep, you knew what that one was. Yeah, it's the best, dude. Well, almost the best. It was, dude. It was great. I mean, I remember seeing that thing the first time. I was like, whoa, look at that. <laughs> so. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> so speaking speaking of Arcanite Reaper Ho, let, let's talk about this. So okay. you're Machinima guy, right? Whenever yeah. whenever you got started, your you're Machinima is like, I mean, that, that's like what your main thing was whenever you started. Now yeah. you're, you're doing a lot more than that. Um how much are you planning to go in on the machinima side of things whenever classic comes out hmm well as my youtube audience will so clearly point out to you like i haven't made a machinima in a little while <laughs> yeah. um you know where's the machinimas nixium i kind of just uh, you know when it comes to my channel I, I just sort of make videos because i want to make them i'm not a business you know or anything i'm not some company i, mean, I just sit here and make videos in my underwear guys and that's what i do uh, so if I don't feel like making a top 10, I don't make a top 10 or a machinima. Uh, 
so when it comes to Classic WoW, Classic WoW is a very inspiring like game to play for me. Like the the storytelling, the quests, like mm. uh, you know, even like making a short machinima about like Nixium trying to get those like you know coarse gorilla hairs, you know, outside of Booty Bay and getting frustrated and an adventure ensues from that. Uh, I don't know. Like I mean that there's a lot of inspiration there uh, that comes out of Classic WoW. So at the moment, like I really because you know, truth be told because bfa has been kind of lackluster for me i mean it hasn't been terrible but it's been a bit lackluster and kind of whatever um i haven't really had that like inspiration that i usually had to like make uh machinima videos and tell stories like with my uh with my, with my wow characters and uh i think that once i start playing classic wow like a lot of that will really come back um, and I do have ideas for videos, uh, classic WoW videos included. I'd really like to make a machinima about the character Gunther Arcanus in the Tears Fall Glades starting zone. Shout out to anybody that knows who that is. There's a quest line called the Prodigal Lich. Do it. Pay attention to it. It's interesting. Um, I'd like to make a machinima about him. I'd like to make a machinima about like my character Nixium and you know, his partner Mukluk uh, back in classic WoW, so before he was a Death Knight and... Well, Nixium has always been a Death Knight. Like, even in Classic WoW, he was a Death Knight. <laughs> and so, you know, so that'll be like the joke. Like, wow, here we are in Classic WoW. Like, oh, Nixium, what are you playing at? It's like, oh, I'm a Death Knight. You know, like, whatever. Level 58 um, Death Knight. Level 58 Death Knight. Like, even in Classic <laughs> WoW, you know? So, um, uh, I don't know. Like, we'll see. It's just a matter of, like, how do I feel in the moment? What sort of ideas come to my mind? And uh, a lot of my machinima ideas um, over the past few years, a lot of them have come from just talking and communicating you know with uh, a lot of you guys like here on here on twitch and fellow content creators and like me and tips out are talking about something like the we were talking about the ruined copper axe story before the uh the stream went live and i was like oh man imagine if we made a video about that that'd be so cool you know or um i don't know like just uh a, a lot of my ideas come with just or just come from interacting with the community so uh we'll, we'll see we will say I'm not promising anything and I'm not not promising anything, <laughs> but we, we will see where the classic road takes takes me in terms of my uh, machinimas because they are fun to make. And whenever you spend like your 60 hours working on that eight minute video in After Effects and Vegas and you sit back and you're like, I'm done. And then you like then you upload it and you see all the comments. Like it's a great feeling. So yeah. it's a great feeling. So yeah. I want I want to feel that feel again, you know? Well, and, and it's it's uh, like in terms of like having um it's almost like creative liberty right like whenever you you have a story you want to tell and and you you pick a medium in which you want to tell the story and um like machinima is something that's so good just because it's you're using the game that everybody else is playing to to tell the story i think that's really good the problem is that like there's there's some like problems with machinima from like a content creation standpoint and i think i do think that's part of the reason why we don't see as much machinima in general compared to what mm. we used to and just how, how everything works now with YouTube and Twitch and this and that and how long it takes to make it. Um, but that's, that's really the big thing. Yeah. It, it takes so long to make and you make no money from it. That's yeah. why so, so few people do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I've always loved making machinima ever since middle school when I first started and I still enjoy it even to this day, even if I haven't made one in a while, it's still, it's my hobby, you know, it's been mm -hmm. doing it for years, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why, Asmund Gold ain't making machinima or whatever. I mean, it takes a long time to do, and it's, hmm. I mean, you got to have a passion for it. Otherwise, it's not really worth it. It definitely, so. I can tell you this from someone that doesn't make machinima, I have no idea. I have no idea how much a pain, of a pain in the ass it is. I'll take your word for it. It's very hard to make. I've never done it. But I'll tell you, I mean, watching people's machinimas, every time I go to Red Rouge and I go to the bridge uh, that leads up to the castle, I think of your video. Uh, you know, the one where the guy's hanging from the rope. I, oh, I, yeah. So it, it adds, That's like, I, I think of people's machinimas as I'm playing the game. It adds another level of depth to the game for me. Like, I'm always, oh, yeah, you know, Nixie made a machinima about this tree and this, like, whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's that's another thing. I mean, that's really the, like the cool thing about machinima because I mean, you can like sit there and make a discussion video and be like, these are my thoughts on the mythic plus changes in patch 8.4. Like, yeah, that's great and all. But, you know, with a machinima, you really get to uh, be creative. Mm -hmm. You know, I can make a if I wanted to right now, I can make a video about a giant gnome picking up the entire city of Stormwind, spitting it on his head, and then it spins out into outer space. It crashes into Sargeras. Sargeras fall. I, I could do anything. <laughs> like you know, you can just run wild. Like, and I think that's like the 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 beauty of it. And um, 
no that, that's not a video idea guys like don't know that's not gonna happen <laughs> or will it leaked it's still better than blizzard lore dude it's still better yeah, than it's, lore. it's still better than blizzard lore you know but uh but uh yeah i mean um it's a lot of fun i personally like making serious machinimas over like um comedy ones like the one stay safe was mentioning is called uh what was that it was called a uh, call of the warrior uh, it was yeah. based on a short story in occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. I think uh, a lot of people have probably read that back in school. Mm -hmm. But um, I like making serious machinimas, but they take a lot longer to make. And, you know, comedy, people people prefer comedy at the end of the day because there's, like, this thing where, like, you know, it's, it's World of Warcraft and, like, WoW models, and they look silly and goofy, and you, kinda, like, you can't really get into it 100%. That's what, a criticism that some people say. Mm -hmm. So I'll make like a video about like uh, like like call the warrior and people will just think it's silly, you know, like these orcs on the bridge, like shooting these guns that are twice the size of their bodies. And but uh, but it's fun. It's it's enjoyable. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, I think it'll be interesting to see like uh, who comes back to making a lot of machinima and, and who kind of sprouts up because uh, hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I just think it'll be really cool to see. Uh, I kind of yeah. want to go. I, I kind of want to go back and um, I want to talk yeah, about one more talking time. About no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to. I want to go back and talk about the BlizzCon stuff just just one more time. Um, okay. And we we touched on this actually when we were just chatting before we turned the show on. Um, face content release. That's that's another thing with uh, where they want to basically how they presented it is that they want to put out. They're at least thinking about putting out Vanilla WoW in four patches. As opposed to mm -hmm. the 11 that we had in, right. in retail vanilla. And um, that's something that I've been pretty like pretty strongly like opposed to. I think that they, they realistically, they need like bare minimum six. But probably seven or eight at least. If they want to do this phased content release instead of patch by patch progression, they probably need seven or eight and bare minimum six uh, phase as opposed to four. Just because they they're putting out too much content into too, uh, too much content into too few of blocks. And what ends up happening is, uh, I, and I think the reason, sorry, I think the reason they want to do this is probably because they want to, uh, they want to make the game more accessible to a wider player base. But in reality, what's happening is the 1% is just going to be able to clear the content even faster and they're mm. going to get an even bigger lead and really like monopolize the economy and uh, just run the server a lot more than uh, a case where it's like, okay, this patch is coming, that patch is coming, and, and, and you move along every few months as opposed to like, I don't know, six months or whatever they would want to do with, uh, with Classic uh, having, mm. having only four patches. How do you guys feel about that? Well, I, I, I can answer first. I think that four patches is a mistake. I, I, I said this with Chrom in our last class cast. I, I understand why they want to do it. I think it's a lazy solution. and they're, I think it's a lazy, easily replicatable solution, so I understand their motives. I think it's the wrong way to go about it. I hope they do six or even more. Like The more, the better, I guess. Um, but I think minimum six. I mean, I, Esfan, you've laid out um, a pretty good approach. Like That's a pretty common idea people have, like the six or seven that uh, people talk about regularly. But yeah, I, I get why they want to do it. I just think it's lazy, and I don't think they should do it. Yeah. Yeah, more or less. Um, I absolutely agree. I think the biggest thing is, you know, the biggest <clears throat> coincidence that I drew is what else has four content releases? Retail WoW. Mm -hmm. Typically, Retail WoW expansions have four content releases as well. They have the launch, and they have their patch point one, point two, and then point three, more or less, and then it usually goes to the next expansion. So it's probably a very convenient way to weave in classic WoW content releases between retail WoW content releases. I think it was Legion where every single content patch came out, what, 77 days? Like it was exactly 11 weeks between each content patch. I think with a predictable cycle like that, Blizzard could take these four stages of classic WoW releases and weave them in seamlessly with retail WoW releases. So all of a sudden we're getting double the content. And I, th that's why I would think they would make it four because it, it kind of weaves in very nicely. But it's horrible, I think. I think it should be at least six. Keep giving your feedback. They said they're open to changing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I mean, uh, ever since, like, I, I even started streaming or doing YouTube, I mean, something that I've really wanted to see if and when Blizzard would do a, a classic WoW Legacy Realm 
I've always wanted to see them recreate every single patch. Uh, like, I like, I, I mean, in my perfect world, I would like it if the classic WoW servers launched on the exact same patch that WoW launched on. And then I could have that uh, that moment with uh, the community where it's like, dude, guys, like, like, there's this thing called Warsong Gulch coming out next week. Like, you guys know what that is? Like, I don't know what that is. You know, and uh, like, oh, I got this new raid coming out. I never heard of it. These changes, you know, uh, certain classes are strong in this period of time. <clears throat> certain classes are weaker in this period of time. That would be like my ideal situation. Although, I mean, going all the way back to when they first announced Classic WoW at BlizzCon, it doesn't really surprise me that they're doing something like this. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It doesn't really surprise me. But again, it's not something I'm necessarily happy about. Right. Uh, but I don't. I don't know what your idea is, S fan, with the whole like six patches, like right. specifically what you've been talking about. But uh, probably whatever you're gonna say, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe we'll say. Yeah. Uh, well, what is what is your what is your six patch idea? So so basically, I, I said that there should be seven. Um, oh okay. And seven. well, and, and I, I think at least six, but but probably seven, uh, or even eight. And actually, like th this isn't a, a totally like far fetched foreign idea, even on. Uh, they, even on private servers, they did the same thing. They they didn't necessarily release eleven different patches. They they would phase the content together and they would package certain patches together. So it's it's not like a totally foreign concept. Um, but like I didn't like Dire Mall being in on release. I thought Dire Mall should come out a few months later, maybe uh, maybe like a month and a half or two months later. <clears throat> Just um, basically phase one. How how Blizzard said they wanted to do it was they wanted to put phase one. With 1.1 through 1.3, basically, and on release have Dire Maul and Kazik and Azergos and uh, Maradon and all that. Maradon on release, I don't see as a big issue. I think that's totally fine. Uh, if, if they put Maradon in on release, that's, that's what they had done on, like, Nostcore private servers, all that stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't see a big issue with that. But stuff like Dire Maul not being in on release, or being in on release, excuse me, is, that's a huge deal, right? Because if you put Dire Maul in on release... Uh, again, going back to these players, like the, the elite players who know the ins and outs of vanilla and know how to capitalize on certain things within Dire Mall, for example, uh, and they, they're just going to basically be able to run the economy. They're going to go in there, they're going to farm Dire Mall, and they're going to get this massive, massive lead. Uh, it's going to totally inflate the economy if you put it in at launch before everybody else is even at 60, right? These are the players that are hitting level 60 in week one, and then they're running straight to Dire Mall to start farming get a bunch of gold there. I don't know. I think, I think it's like a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, I could be wrong. And, I, and I'm looking at it worst case scenario whenever I say that, <clears throat> but uh, I personally would like to see Dire Maul uh, come out a few months later along with the world bosses. Uh, then I think they should put out a patch for like a PVP patch before Blackwing Lair comes out. So PVP patch, Blackwing Lair, uh, and then I think they should separate ZG from Blackwing Lair as well. So ZG and, and maybe the Emerald Dragons are in their own patch on their own. And then 1.9, or AQ patch, excuse me, with uh, the Dungeon Set 2 PvP gear upgrades. And then uh, Nax. I think I touched on everything. Uh, I, 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 try to, I try to glaze over it because I, I really didn't want to like spend a, whole time, a lot of time like going super deep into it. But uh, mm. I think I touched on everything as far as like how I think the phases should go. But do that over the course of like two years, right? Vanilla, I think vanilla lasted like 25 months or something. I, I forget the exact, uh, I think, because it came out in November. It might have been just over two years. It came out in November 2004, and then patch 2.0 was like the first week of December. So like 24 and a half months. So I think right. doing it over the course of two years is, is totally fine. Yeah, Nixium, I actually, um, so you said you would have preferred actual patch by patch sort of vanilla while recreating. Like yeah. one, like one to one. Yeah, that's that's actually what I would have preferred. Uh, that was sort of like all the time my my selfish desire. Like that's I really wanted to relive that actually as it was, and I knew that you're never going to have that on a private server. Only, if anyone can do it, Blizzard is the one that can do it. Um, but at the same time, though, I, that's what I personally wanted. I knew that that, and I want to know you th what you think about this. I think that that would have been actually bad for their longevity of Classic. But I think that would have been really putting that would have put off a lot of potential new players. It would have been really confusing. Imagine all the all the talent tree updates and spell reworks. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I would have wanted, right? But I think that would have been bad for a lot of new players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can agree with that. Yeah, I can get behind that. You know, I, I'm just like, uh, I mean, for me, I mean, 
I personally just want to relive the classic WoW experience as close to what it was back in the day as possible. Um, that includes, you know, everything that you were just talking about. Um, however, I think you're right. I mean, it would have issues uh, like hurting the community or like it would have issues like confusing people within the community. Um, and uh, again, it's I, I never expected Blizzard to do like a full classic WoW patch cycle. Um, it, it, it doesn't surprise me at all if they're going to do like a four patch like uh, release cycle. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. So, because I don't, I, I don't know, like what's going on behind the scenes of Blizzard Entertainment. Mm -hmm. I don't know <clears throat> how much, how much of their old data do they have? Like, do they have the data from like the 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 third patch ever of Classic WoW? Do they have that ready to go and implement it? Maybe, maybe not. Well, like, what about the say, fourth, the fifth? They yeah, they yeah, said they don't they, have. I think they said they don't have everything. I think they said they yeah, had everything to, uh, back in to like twelve. Yeah, yeah, and then and then after that, it kind of just like gets frayed more and more as they go down. So yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, always, I, I see you playing WoW, by the way, Mr. Stay Safe. I was actually on Minecraft for a while. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> oh. dude I, I see you. I, I, I was like, what is he playing? And then I saw that like <laughs> WoW rug, and I was like, dude, that's, that's playing WoW. <laughs> so something else that's been like a big like topic, topic of discussion uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks has been uh, the concept of spell batching. And uh, just to kind of explain in layman's terms what spell batching is... Uh, it's basically like a latency buffer, and the most common uh, occurrence, or I guess the yeah the most common occurrence of spell batching in effect would probably be whenever two people are out of range of each other, and then they run into range, or um, maybe using an ability off a of cooldown. Let's say you have two paladins in a duel running at each other, and then spamming Hammer of Justice as soon as they get in range, and then all of a sudden they both hammer each other, right? So what spell batching is, it's Every like I, I think they say it's like 400 milliseconds. Uh, it basically parses what buttons you've pressed, and then if you you're casting like an instant cast spell or something, that's whenever it like ticks and it goes off. So um, you know it's 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 something that it, it's these little windows are so fast that it's it's not something that you uh, really notice, especially not back then. But uh, you could technically do things like. Uh, somebody blinks and you blind them at the same time, and then all of a sudden they blink and they're blinded over there, or gouged if you're a rogue, or well, I guess that's both rogue abilities. But same thing with like Hammer of Justice, or um, or sorry, like Repentance, uh, Hammer of Justice. If you if you hammer them while they do that, I'm I'm pretty sure it still breaks the stun because of the blink buff that's on them whenever they go, uh, <clears throat> the blink effect. Excuse me, but um, but yeah, that's that's basically what spell bashing is, and a lot of people uh, noticed that spell bashing didn't seem to be in effect in the classic demo. And a lot of people are coming in just like, oh, like this is something that needs to be changed. And uh, I do think spell batching is something that's good for the game in general. But um, it looks like, and, and, and when we heard this today, actually, but we heard a rumor that supposedly they're, uh, they, they've seen the community feedback about people wanting spell batching to be put into the game. And they're looking at ways to try and implement it, to try and re-implement it in, in, in some fashion. So I, I think that's good news. I, I think that's, that's, that's a win for you know, people putting in good feedback and uh, giving examples of why it works and examples of why it's good. And <clears throat> uh, at, at least we know that Blizzard sees it, right? Uh, or at least that's, that's yeah. the rumor, right, that they've seen it. So I, I think it's really good. And I also think it's very indicative of one thing. I mean, if anyone ever doubted, uh, Blizzard's intentions, or the, or the Classic WoW development team's intentions with recreating the actual authenticity of Classic WoW, I think this speaks volumes to that point. This is something, the spell batching thing is something that they could so easily just say, no, not going to happen. Like, it, it is, for, 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 I think for the vast majority of people playing Classic WoW, they're not going to notice it. They would have never noticed it. It's something that is really catering to, you know, vanilla nerds. Mm -hmm. Those are the people so. that are going to notice this. And yeah. it, it would have been very easy for, for the Classic WoW dev team to brush this off and they said they acknowledge it and they're looking into it like i think that's actually a very very good sign yeah, yeah. I, agree. I actually didn't even know about this until these guys told me about it so i was like what they were yeah, talking yeah. about the article so this was a subject unfamiliar to me yeah so so, so ah, yeah right. and it's i mean I, who knows if they're actually going to be able to pull it off or, or what but we know that at least like they've, they've heard the feedback so yeah that's the uh that's the story. What is okay? Did, did I uh, maybe I didn't do a good job of explaining spell batching? I, I thought I thought I explained I it pretty I well. Did good. Okay, yeah. You guys can go. Explained it well enough to me. I mean, I understood yeah. it. I was like, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, pretty much, pretty much like it's like you said, spells are sort of processed in chunks at a time server side, and so you'll have two people that are maybe both of them spamming a CC or something, and this is what lets mages. Uh, uh, let's say they're both spamming it. This is what lets mages uh, polymorph each other, or what what's let what lets you know, like you said, paladins hodge each other. It's it's I think it's uh it's pretty easy to understand. I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So guys, here in a second. Uh... We want to go into Q and A. Uh, we're we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna give you guys. Uh, we're, we're gonna want to talk to you guys, right? Hear from you guys. What do you guys want to hear from us? Uh, if you guys tweet at us with hashtag Classicast, uh, I, I want to look at Twitter first, and um, we can kind of we can kind of start going from there. Is there anything you guys want to touch on before we uh, before we go into Q and A? And we'll we'll also take some questions from chat uh, as well pretty soon. Uh, just usually we start on Twitter and then we go to chat. So uh, one question I saw that was asked of us uh, a couple times throughout the cast so far was, what do we think, and we get this, uh, or we've talked about it a lot at least, what do we think of post max content? This is actually something that they said they're not going to do. Um, when we talk to them, and yeah. Swan has a recording of this up on his YouTube channel, you can go watch it. I highly recommend going and watching that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, it was a Q&A with two of the classic devs, and we got to sit down and ask them questions for about a half hour, 25 minutes, us and some other people in the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, we asked them, what do you think about this? Are you, are you thinking of doing this, post next content or bonus content for Classic WoW? And they said, that's not something we're even considering right now, or something to, to that effect. Yeah, yeah. And, the the impression I got from the, the response was that it wasn't exactly no, but it wasn't like it it left the door open while they were saying like look that's not really on our plate like we're, we're working on getting the game out first before we're working on the end of the game you know so that was the impression i got why are you smiling tips out what are you thinking i, I think he liked what he saw <laughs> um, um i don't know what you're talking about dude <laughs> oh this is something interesting to talk about actually okay. um so wowhead put out a uh they're they're putting out a thoughtbot theme for their new classic site. Do you guys see this? I, did. I saw that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so Wowhead uh, Wowhead's classic site will get a new feature. Users will be able to choose a thoughtbot theme to increase mm -hmm. their classic Wow immersion as it's coming together. Some pages are starting to look a lot like thoughtbot. Yeah, I think. I uh, gotta say, like Wowhead is really going going above and beyond with catering to the classic crowd. Like, yeah, they, I'm really surprised they, they, they did they were, that. To be honest. Yeah, I, I'm really surprised in talking to them. Um, their enthusiasm for, for classic WoW and like catering to, to the classic WoW player base is it's like over the top. It's like whoa, yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah. surprised actually. Yeah. No, I think uh, I think that's something cool. Like I know for me personally, like whenever WoWhead came out at the end of Vanilla and uh, especially in BC, like I, I used WoWhead over Thoughtbot just because I, I I like the look of it better personally. Mm -hmm. uh, Thoughtbot reminds me a lot of Reddit, and I, I don't really like the embedded comments like that, but. Um, I, I think it's uh, I think that's really cool. I think it's really impressive that they brought that back, and it'll be it'll be fun to to look at stuff like in Thoughtbot style, uh, especially like the Thoughtbot comments. So like just old data from, you know, fourteen years ago, fifteen or sorry, thirteen years ago, thirteen fourteen years ago. Uh, I think that'll be really cool. I think it was really I think it'll be really really cool. Yep, that's gonna be great. I do have to say, as fans, since you or or since it was brought up, I mean, if Blizzard did do something after Naxxramas, anything, what would you want to say? This question is for anybody. Hmm. Burning Crusade. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you, you mean, well, no, you're talking about post Nax. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It's got to be something that they haven't done before. Or maybe something they have currently done, and we're just like, oh, cool. You know what I'd like to see? What? Northeron. Northeron? Is that lit? There's that, if you look on the Eastern Kingdoms map in, uh, yes. in Classic, there's that little zone, like, beside That you can't, you can't click Kingdom. on, and, yeah. Yeah, I want to see, like, that little place become, like, just a little zone. Like, oh, it's, I don't know, then you go there and you do something. Like, just that little area, Northeron. Yeah. I think, yeah. uh, if they, I don't think they should add anything, but if they had, yeah. like, paladins could just grow wings out of their back and fly, and just, like, shoot lasers out of their nipples i think that'd be so cool no i'm just kidding uh, cool. <laughs> no, I, no. I, I, I feel like if they if blizzard did put flying in the game i don't know i feel like it would like no it would be terrible it would be terrible yeah <laughs> no it would be terrible I don't know. so <laughs> all, all jokes aside all jokes aside i i would like to uh i think it'd be cool if they went through and they released like uh karazhan and caverns of time and and hyjal and uh grim and uh, there, there's so much stuff there's so much content in the game that's basically like primed 
for yeah. classic, but they ended up going on with Bruin and Crusade and then, you know, the rest is history, right? But uh, I, I think there's so much that's on the table there, like unused zones, like you said, Northeron. I, I didn't know that's what it was called, but um, yeah. but that that's just another example, right, of, of things that are there. Like you look at the map and you open it up and it's like, it's there, it's in WoW, but if they could just kind of do that. And whenever we talk to John Stats, he told Actually, us... Sorry. You were... I, I was going to say, talking to John Stats, I, I think that that specific spot came up, and he said that was supposed to represent um, Stratham. I think Oh, I think, I, like, I think, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we did talk about that. Uh, that's, yeah. But um, but either way, the uh, whenever we talked to John Stats, he said that they made so much extra junk. Like, they they had the team that was like, you know, the, the map guys, the world, like the level design guys that were just like pumping stuff out. And then you almost had like the, the there was like a, a, a choke point where it was like you have all this stuff and you're trying to cram it into this, uh, cram it into the game. And it was like, okay, well, we can take this. We can't take this. We're going to make Karazhan three times. And then even then they didn't have time to put it in for, for vanilla. They put it in Burning Crusade and all kinds of stuff, right? So uh, mm. I, I do think, I, I mean, I don't know how much of that stuff they have like in the game and prepared, but like if you wall jump across and you go down into the uh, into the Caverns of Time, like all that stuff that you see in Burning Crusade is there in vanilla, at least on the outside mm. of it. So how much of what's inside? Well, actually, didn't they say... Uh, Black Morass is in the game files. I think Black Morass is. is in the vanilla yeah. game files. So it's it how how much else is in there, right? Hygel was obviously based off of the Hygel that's in the world, uh, in in vanilla WoW or in the open world that you can't really access. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think stuff like that is is really really interesting to think about. I'd also I think it would be cool if they put like you know just just dreaming big here. I think it'd be cool if they made more dungeons as well. Because, I mean, I'm just a spoiled child and I want more dungeons. And I think uh, there are definitely a lot of class quests in Classic WoW. Mm -hmm. But there's sometimes like a big like space. Like, you know, you hit like level 30 and then you do your class quest. And you don't really you don't really have one every single level. Um, maybe for some classes you do. I haven't played every single class. But I would like it if like uh, every single like 10 levels there was a dedicated class quest that rewarded something really cool. Um, so... But that would be something cool as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, I'd love to see Blizzard, like, I wouldn't want to necessarily see an extra raid tier, but I like what you said, Big Sam. I'd like to see more dungeons, um, just develop more content, maybe player housing. I don't know, stuff that they never really got to add in. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to see an extra raid tier unless it went on to TBC, as Stay Safe said. But, mm -hmm. yeah, just more like world content. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, all, all, like this stuff is this stuff is always going to be fun to talk about. But um, yeah. at, at the end of the day, like, like it's I mean, not happening. It, well, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not happening. Yeah. Well, it goes it goes back to like what they said. Like, it's not even something they've even considered. You know, it's it's not even yeah. been on the plate for them. And uh, it's just fun to talk about because you know that's yeah. we, we love the game, right? But yeah. um, it's like you got to get the game first, and then you can talk about some of the the fun stuff like that down the road. But I do think Burning Crusade is the most it, Burning Crusade is yeah. the most likely option, but I also think it's uh, the smartest option for them to to just naturally progress into Burning Crusade. Um, Pet battles, man. Mm -hmm. And then also release fresh servers. That's something else we've talked about too. Like yeah. they can't not release fresh servers because mm -hmm. what's going to happen is the people who want that class experience and just want to keep playing classic or play fresh or whatever are just going to turn around. And they're going to go back to private servers whenever that first cycle of classic is done. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's another big issue. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't want a damn thing. I think one of the beautiful things about Classic WoW is that we know exactly what it is. We don't have to worry about any new or modern design elements leaking into it. The my biggest concern with um with new content being added to Classic WoW throughout its uh, playthrough or after next Ramus would be it would just implicate my concern is that it would implicate aspects of the game that we know and love. That's my biggest concern. We would be trusting we would be trusting. Um, development of new classic well content with the retail wow development team um or or modern day 2018 blizzard who we are all presumably unhappy with um with what they've done with bfa and, and retail wow so i that's that's my big concern i know exactly what it is with classic wow and that's exactly what i want mm -hmm. yeah yeah i saw people in the chat saying like whatever happened to no changes guys it's like listen it's a hypothetical situation. Well, it's like, hypothetical can you, can you not, like, yeah, can you not talk about something fun? Like, geez. Yeah, dude. 
I mean, gosh, yeah. don't you guys want pet battles in classic <laughs> WoW? Like, come on, man. Yeah, I love like, that one. Like, but, uh... It'd be so much better. Like... <laughs> now, the, uh, this, this is a good question, and, and this is kind of like a stream-related question. Uh, okay. What are... Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, this is from Twitter. With Project 60, basically, like, uh, what do we plan on doing after Project 60? Like, what are, what are our plans until the release of Classic? And I'll go ahead and start. Um, I've talked about this for a while now. I, I've honestly, dude, I've talked about this since I've gotten banned, and, and I haven't really... I've, I've only dabbled, but um, playing other games is something that I really want to do before the release of Classic, because growing up, I played WoW, I played Dark Age of Camelot, then I played WoW, and then I played League of Legends, and then question 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 mark and then I, I i started playing wow again so like i didn't get an opportunity to like really fully invest into a game outside of outside of wow i mean outside of wow and league i, di I didn't really get to invest into that so growing up like, i got a bunch of friends in high school who like oh i played bioshock and mass effect and elder scrolls and this and that and even more recently games like the witcher and dark souls like i, I didn't play any of these games because i was so heavily invested in whatever else i was doing and uh, I really want to take the chance to go through and I want to play some games like that and just do fun stuff with friends. Like, you know, Stacey was talking about Minecraft earlier, playing some Minecraft and uh, just just doing other stuff. Basically, uh, I, I'll still want to I still want to play arenas in retail. Wow. I really love arenas, but that's pretty much it for me right now. And uh, who knows? That could change. But uh, I think until the classic alpha or beta, uh, if and when we get into that, then uh, I, I think that's kind of the plan for me is to do a lot of other games and uh, after Project 60, maybe we're going to try Project 70, but we've heard that there's a lot of problems with Project 70, so that might not be something to really bank on. So Project 60, maybe dabble in Project 70, and then from there we'll... What, uh, uh, what are the problems with that? I'm just curious. They said the scaling just makes it totally jacked up. Like they, they can't like clear sun well or like even like a fully... T I heard that a fully twinked out level 70 guild could not clear sun well. So really, yeah. So like, I, I don't know. So we'll, we'll, we'll play with it a little bit and see, see what happens maybe for like a week or two. But, uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I'm not putting too much stock into project 70, but we're, we're at least gonna, we're at least gonna try it out and see what happens. And then, uh, as far as 8.1 goes, I don't know. I, I like, we'll see, like I said, like, we'll see what happens. But like right now, like my current thoughts on, uh, BFA is pretty much just arena and PVP. And like, that's, that's what I like to do. I don't really like to do much else. Hmm. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, personally, like out, outside of alpha and beta, I hope I get in. I don't know, if, but outside of classic alpha and classic beta, I'm now I'm running a Minecraft server. Um, I've been playing the last couple of days. I'm actually having so much freaking fun playing that Minecraft server. It's like the most fun I've had in a long time. Minecraft is, is a great game. I'm sort of playing, uh, I'm working on a Diablo 2 playthrough on stream. Um, I'm doing a lot more IRL content. I actually just, I just ordered, I'm put, I'm putting it together the next couple of days, uh, an IRL streaming backpack. I purchased it and I paid for all the fees. So I'm putting it together the next couple of days as it arrives at the house. A lot of traveling IRL content as well. I want to, every couple of weeks, I want to travel to a new town in the U S and, um, an IRL stream in that town for a long weekend. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm still going to be, uh, playing BFA. Um, I'm going to be sort of, I'm actually focused on twinking. I want to do a 60 twink. And uh, there's a 39 twink I want to play more. I might twink in each bracket, just sort of casually. But outside of that, a lot more diverse kind of content. Yeah. Yeah. IRL too. That was another thing for me too. Mm. Yeah. I ordered. I ordered a backpack as well to do like IRL stuff. And I've been using the Twitch backpack. I have to give it. Oh, I have to give it back like t tonight. Maybe I don't know. I gotta figure oh, out how to give it back. Yeah. Um. But uh. But yeah, I, I I've, I've ordered an IRL backpack as well and doing a lot more IRL stuff like that. So. What about you, Tips? Uh, I was going to ask you the same thing, but I got something on my mind, and we talked about it a little bit for uh, a little bit before the stream, and I want to see what you think about it, and I want to see what everybody in chat thinks about it, too. So, just purely speculation-wise, we will probably get some kind of testable version of Classic in three months, um, or uh, somewhere around that timeline. Yeah, maybe even sooner. Maybe sooner. Maybe sooner. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, we talk a lot about community. We talk a lot about the classic community and all of our separate communities together. Uh, and Nixium, you've been playing Lord of the Rings online recently. I was yep. thinking, what if what if we got a bunch of streamers together and kind of got all of our communities really, really hyped up for a new MMO? It doesn't matter what MMO. Um, ideally, something free to play to get as many people involved as possible but just something to play within the next couple of months together as a community 
going to Classic WoW. It would kind of be like Project 60, but an actual new game, a new experience, fresh experience with new people. Um, I think something like that would be really fun. We have 1,700 people in the chat right now. Um, something like that together, uh, whether it be just for a couple of weeks or something, I think that would be really cool. Uh, just something to do between now and Classic. What do you guys in the chat think? And Nixium, what do you think about that? Well, so first of all, before I answer that, what like what happened? Like who? Which one of you in the chat did the black magic to make everybody suddenly want to play Minecraft? Like I was Dude, talking okay. about, like oh, like man, I should make a Minecraft server or something. And then like me and me and one of my moderators, Gamir, were talking about it. Then all of a sudden, Stay Safe's playing Minecraft, and like all my friends are like, oh, dude. Thomas, dude, we gotta play some Minecraft. Like, <laughs> everyone like wants to play Minecraft all of a sudden. And it's like, what happened? <laughs> so, so that's my first question. I I first thought of the idea of like I, I wanted to make a Minecraft server towards the end of Legion because I I was just kind of like I'm bored and I wanna I wanna do some other stuff. I'm thinking about making a Minecraft server. Uh, yeah. And then I BFA came out short. Actually, it was the BFA pre patch came out shortly after. I was like, <laughs> okay, this is fun. I'm having a lot of fun. Screw yeah. Minecraft. That's basically what happened with me. And then uh, it's just kind of been like, I've been talking about maybe doing Minecraft again, but I, I didn't really think about it that much. And then I saw like a lot of like uh, a lot of like the other people, like I know like Pokelols and, and Trendwreck and those guys were all playing the other day. Andy's been playing. And I was like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Like I, I've totally like had this like I, I kind of have an itch to go play other games like. Oh, yeah, like I'm yeah. saying like you're you're kind of like okay this isn't fun right now so you're kind of going through like your your library and you're like okay well like let's pick this back up let's pick League of Legends back up okay let's pick Minecraft up okay let's pick this back up that's kind of what's happening with me so it's, yeah. it's so funny because in 20 I think it was early 2012 oh yeah I lost you lost you yeah we lost it say again you hear me hello we good yeah yeah we're yeah. good I was saying in late 2011 or early 2012 I actually hosted a really really big Minecraft server certainly there was like several hundred people always online around the clock and it's it's what's funny about it is um Minecraft it, like the terminology is sort of similar to um to classic wow like the server I like to run is a vanilla anarchy pvp uh no the change of server fun. Like that's yeah. what it is. Like no no customizations, just OG Minecraft, no add-ons, no plugins, and the, and the terminology that people use is vanilla, anarchy, PvP, no changes. Like I'm, it's it's actually very very similar. So that's what I'm hosting again. Um, so do you don't if you don't mind, Steve, can you kind of explain how it works uh, for people that have no idea? Uh, I I have no idea how it works. How many people can you host on your server? Could we all join the lot, server? Yeah, I, I mean no it depends it yeah. depends on how big uh, how big of a server you pay for. Right now, mine I think could be capped at 400. I have it set at 200 right now. Um, I could even bump it up past that if you guys all want to merge onto one server. Mine is already infrastructure is all set up and good to go. Um, what what I'm what the kind of server I like to host? There's no plugins. There's no factioned land. There's no set teams. There's you just log in and you play and you can make friends. You can form teams. You can backstab each other. You can raid each other's bases. You want to like run off to the far reaches of the land and hide your base and hide it very well so people can't raid or grief it. But you can you can kill your friends. You can kill anyone at any, at any time. Um, and that's how I like to play it. Yeah. Vanilla, PvP, Anarchy, no changes. Yeah, I played that earlier and I great. killed a lot of friends. I it's... just killed everybody. How, how would we join? How would we join up on your server? Stay safe uh, real quick for everybody in the chat right now that's interested. Uh, right now, all you have to do is download Minecraft. I think it's $26 if you don't have it already. You can go to my chat and do exclamation point Minecraft and you'll get the server IP and then you can join. I would love, I'd love all of us if we would just want to merge communities on one server. I could give, I could give yeah. all three of you guys um, admin privileges and you could... Um, uh, okay. that, that mean, that'll make it so you, you guys can fly, you can toggle your game mode, so you guys will be able to toggle your, uh, the three of you will be able to toggle your game mode, um, to fly around and or spawn items. I don't think we should do that though. Earlier today, when on my stream, I was flying around and sort of, uh, I can teleport to people and I can watch them play while invisible, and I can see if they're cheating or hacking, <laughs> so I was watching people play, and, uh, it was really funny, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, legitimately playing, I'm actually playing and mining, and I'm, I'm playing like a normal person, and I think that's how you have to do it. I think the second you have admins spawning, stupid shit and it sort of just undermines the entire idea of the server so that's that's how i'm running it mm -hmm. okay well i still haven't even answered the question <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the original turn question wait what was the question again uh, what are basically what are what are now? our plans what are our plans between uh now and like classic launch alpha oh. beta whatever okay so like uh okay um sorry to leave you all in suspense chat uh so what are my plans well, I've been playing a lot of Lord of the Rings Online recently. I love Lord of the Rings Online. I've always been a big fan of Lord of the Rings Online and Lord of the Rings in general, so I, mean, I love it. And they recently did their whole legendary server thing. They uh, 
they pretty much looked at old school RuneScape and they saw, well, Blizzard's doing it and RuneScape's doing it, so we got to do it too. So they brought back like, you know, kind of like classic Lord of the Rings. And so I've been checking that out and I've been having a lot of fun with that, playing with, you know, some fellow streamers and playing with the community. And that's been a lot of fun. So I'm going to enjoy playing that a little bit in my free time when I get bored of doing Mount Runs and BFA. Um, I intend to make more videos, you know, on YouTube, more RL stuff, more variety things. Been talking about that a lot. Um, and uh, pretty much like what these guys are just saying, like just a bigger variety of things. And then eventually you'll get that uh, classic WoW Alpha or Beta. I'll check that out. I will not go too hardcore on it because I I don't want to burn myself out, you know, and I don't I don't want to like level to 60 on a beta. Like I want to do it on you know, official, you know. Um, right. And so, uh, and so uh, yep, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling. I mean, I'm moving to Europe, so I'm going to be... I think I'm going to go like full on history nerd on my YouTube channel. Time to unsubscribe, guys. But I'm going to like travel across like the United Kingdom and be like, guys, this is where this thing happened. Like, well, right there. Like, that's where that's where William Wallace, you know, was like drawn and quartered right in this spot. Like, wow, isn't that so cool? And do some like history videos and do some traveling, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. Just big variety of things. And uh, and uh I also want to, like, there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to care about this, but, I mean, I care about it, and that's what matters. Uh, I mean, I used to, like, I used to be, like, really fat back in the day, and I lost, like, 80-plus pounds, and it's kind of a common question that I get asked on Twitch, like, oh, like, how, how, do, how do you lose weight? Like, do you, like, what do you eat? What exercises do you do? So I kind of want to do some like fitness stuff on my channel as well and just give advice to the big boys, you know, my my fellow big boys out there and uh, kind of inspire them a little bit because, you know, that's just me. But big variety of stuff and eh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Lots mm -hmm. of games, lots of everything. Yeah. So yeah, I think that sounds good. That sounds exciting. At least you got a plan. Yeah, that's it. awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching that gym stream for sure. Dude, stay, dude, stay safe. If you're going to like... All you guys, if you're gonna be like backpacking around with your Twitch backpacks, being all fancy and stuff, and coming around the U.S., you gotta come visit me before I move away. Well, where are you or at? Well, you're leaving. You're leaving fast, aren't you? You're uh, not I'm, fast I, soon. I mean, I'd like to be moved over there by like April or May. Oh, okay. You're, oh, yeah. You're gonna go and come back. That's right. Yeah, I'm. Com I'm coming back. Like, I'm gonna be leaving in a few days, and I'll be there for three months, and then I'm coming back to take care of a bunch of like hoo ha back here in the states, and then I'm moving over right. there. And you're you're in, um, you're in one of them that one of them Carolinas, aren't you? I'm in I'm in North Carolina. North have, Carolina, you know, all right. North Carolina, you know. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm in North Carolina, like you know, just outside of Charlotte. So you know, if you guys ever want to backpack your way over here and hang out and go camping out in Yawari National Forest, like hell yeah, be great. Get these nerds outside, guys. You know. Yeah, no there you go. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So. So where 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 in the UK the UK right where in the UK are you moving to? Uh, is that public? I don't want to like make that public because I don't want normies sure. following me around. But I'll say like the south. Okay. Okay. Fair so, enough. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother! So not in London. Yep. Like, no, forget that. <laughs> as fan said that before I went live, he's like, "Dude, you should move to London." I was like, ah. <laughs> well, was tips, "No, I've been tips. to London." Uh, I've been to, oh, it's Tennessee. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I've been to London quite a few times. It's a rat's nest. Like, no way, man. Like, I ain't going there. So, I <laughs> dude, I'm moving to hang out with PewDiePie. That's right, guys. That's right. Heisenberg and chat. Like, me and PewDiePie are going to hang out. We're good buddies secretly. There you go, uh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, so we'll take, uh, we'll take a couple more questions here. Um, this is one from Sforty. Are there any types of add ons you feel like Blizzard should actively ban or prevent? add-ons uh adding modern texture packs client side or other things okay um so right now there is a like if you have the 1.12 client there is an add-on pack that or not an add-on pack it's, it's a texture pack or i guess model pack i don't know i, I forgot what it's called exactly it's been so long since i even looked at it um for people to put like wad models into the game Mm. Uh, in the 1.12 client this is something some people did on private servers uh i'm personally not a fan of it but they did it and i don't know like if that affects like the animations or anything other than just the models um <laughs> i think if it just affects the models like I, I don't know what they would do to prevent that if it's bannable like i i remember in burning crusade what i did 
I'm sure they've got a better way of tracking it now. But in Burning Crusade, I had model swapped my Season 3 PvP weapon, my Season 3 two-hander, into the Ashbringer. So on my screen, I was running around the Ashbringer, but I didn't stream or make videos and stuff back then, so it wasn't an issue. Um, but I wonder if now, like, if you did something like that, it would trigger and, and you'd get caught for it. I, I'm not sure. Um, that's the only thing I can think of whenever whenever you mentioned like texture packs or models like that. As far as add-ons go, um, we've talked about like the potential of like an LFR, so, not LFR, LFG tool or something like that. If if they made something like that, if they would uh, if they would step in and, and block it. Am I remembering this correctly? Whenever I, I'm remembering them saying something about that. Do you guys remember that? Tip, stay safe. I remember them. Well, I, I I'm, them, I'm not saying. sure. Did they? Did they nix him? Okay. I, I thought they I, said I something about interview. I, I, they talked about this subject. Uh, I don't know if it was at BlizzCon. Was it at BlizzCon? Maybe there was something else after BlizzCon too. But I thought I remember. Yeah. I thought I remember that uh, them saying that if something was an issue, then uh, they could come in and they could basically like uh, they could they could yeah. cut it off. Yeah. I never really like messed around with like anything like that. I didn't even know you could do that. I was just a good like thirteen year old. I just had the nude patch for a while. Good. You know? They have no shame there. I mean everybody did. I'm like, well, no. <laughs> so that was best. You know, that was uh, best. <laughs> so turned the game into eighteen plus, you know. Nice dude. <laughs> but yeah, man. Yeah. You know? About about as many uh, about as many plus as there is bits, right? Mm-hmm. Eighteen I'm bit nude patch. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> man of the people. Yeah. I don't um, know. I think I think Blizzard would just have to like kind of monitor it. Like I I did I uh, I mean I have no idea what is K like what these add-on creators are gonna be able to make come like classic WoW. Um, I don't know. I think it's just something that we're just gonna have to like wait and see what happens. And if an add-on does come out that does something absolutely ridiculous or starts breaking the game or it, it's borderline cheating, you mm -hmm. know, then I mean yeah. I mean obviously Blizzard will have to step in and do something. But I think it's just a matter of. You know, I mean, like the only add-on that I'm personally like, like, oh yeah, I'll probably download that. Is uh, when I want to level up characters quickly, I'll just download like the Joanna's leveling guide, like add-on. Just like run through it and get sixty in like two days. Yeah, um, dude. <laughs> but that, that won't be my first character. But I'll be like, oh, I just want to get this shaman to sixty as fast as possible. So, um, right. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think, Mr. Tips? I think it's great. Um, you had me at downloaded nude add-ons for a while, so uh, that's did. Yeah, I oh, mean, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no, it, all, it sounds fantastic. No, I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, uh, I, I may or may not have been checking something <laughs> in the past couple of minutes. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, what no, have I done? It all sounds wonderful. Absolutely, it wasn't me. Oh, it was wonderful. Actually, it was. It was very wonderful. Actually, it's it's kind of strange. My dad just randomly texted me this morning. And he's like, have you gotten arrested recently? Um, if yes, you have a criminal case and you might need a lawyer. So I'm just kind of like, mm. I just texted him back real quick. Just a little monk ass. But yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I would say, in my opinion, anything that's sort of fundamentally spirit of vanilla WoW. So the first thing that comes to mind would be, you know, any sort of group finder add-on or any sort of queue. Um, like, if, if, for example, if there was an add-on that made it so you could queue for battlegrounds anywhere in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would say get rid of that. If there was yeah, an add-on yeah. that you that would that was a dungeon fighter add-on or some sort of dungeon queue add-on, I would say get rid of that. Um, things like that. Any anything that just very clearly is out of the spirit of vanilla WoW would not belong there. I hope that they shut those things down. And there mm -hmm. is, or sort of like trivializes the game. There is precedent for that. I mean, they they did that in Wrath of the Witch King with uh, what was that add-on called that people would use on Professor Future Side that just made the boss uh, way too easy. I forget the name of it. Um, but they they have they have shut down add-ons in the past that just undermined the spirit of the game, and I would expect them to do the same thing uh, in classic WoW. Hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I think they said as much at BlizzCon, by the way. I think Ian was asked that question, and he did say that they were going to look into add-ons that did take away from from the original vanilla philosophy. So they're, they'll at All least right. be taking a look at them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> uh, actually, I, I was thinking we are. Um... We are running a little bit, uh, a little bit later, and we wanted to cut it off about this time. So, uh, if you guys don't have anything else, I think it might be that time. Just wanted to say thanks for bringing me on, guys. It was an absolute, an absolute pleasure hanging out with you guys again. 
gotta play some Minecraft together, me and Tips. Play some Lord <laughs> of the Rings online, man. Like, oh, yeah, dude. Okay. Dude, I, I shall guide you to the prancing pony, my friend. I shall guide <laughs> you all. You know, it'll be great. Yeah. You know, but that's pretty much it. I, I appreciate you guys bringing me back yeah. on. And, you know, I'm always available. Just hit me up. For sure, dude. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun having you back on, man. Yeah, thanks um, for coming on, dude. Thank you so much, dude. Mm -hmm. Dude, no problem. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue the stream afterwards. Uh, if you guys want to hang around, hang out. Uh, if you guys missed the earlier part of, the, part of this podcast, you can see it on my YouTube channel, SFANTV. Uh, also, please, if you haven't already, please go follow Tips, Nixium, Stay Safe on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, all their URLs are right there below their names, below their... Below their uh, uh, face cams over there. Yeah, yeah. Journey home, of course. Tips t-shirts. Right, right. So, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Shout out that t-shirt, man. Yeah. So Thank again, you. appreciate you guys all being here, and we will see you guys next time. See you guys. Yeah, take care, everyone. See you, boys. Peace.